It's all corner around this racetrack. We'll talk more about that later, but right now they have fired the engines. Let's go down to the pole and Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, Rusty Wallace has been waiting for a little over a week now. Yesterday in practice, he had one of the fastest, if not the fastest cars out here. He's ready to go. Rusty, you're going to make that uh, week's wait worth it all? I can't really tell you. I hear you real good. Everything's pretty loud out here, but I don't expect the track to change much today. I think it's going to be in pretty good shape. The car was great last practice last night. The snow didn't slow us none. It's just a different day. I'm not used to racing on Saturdays. Okay, we wish him the best of luck. Now let's go way back in the back to Randy Pemberton. Well, Glenn Jarrett, I'm standing back here in the 17th row. This is where our Winston Cup points leader is sitting, Dale Jarrett, who is just buckling up to get ready for this 500 miles. Now, Dale did not have a very good qualifying run, and on top of that, he has come down with the flu. He is not feeling very well, and he just hopes that he can go the distance. So Dale Jarrett, our Winston Cup points leader, not feeling well. He does not have a driver standing by as of right now. So although he's not feeling well, he shouldn't feel very lonely, because back here with him at the starting grid, Kyle Petty will start in the 27th position. Then it's Alan Kawicki. He's starting way back in the 27th position. Of course, he's the 1992 Winston Cup champion. Davey Allison starting 31st, and way, way back in the field is Daryl Waltrip. He is in the 35th starting position. Of course, Daryl, the three-time Winston Cup champion. We'll be back with live flag to flag coverage of the Lone Craft 500 coming up. Let's have a look at the starting grid here in Atlanta for the Motorcraft 500. On the pole, Rusty Wallace, who won here in 1988 in the Miller Pontiac. Dale Earnhardt's won six times here at Atlanta. In row number two, Mark Martin is third in the point standings, and Jeff Gordon got his first Bush Series win right here. Row three, Ernie Irvin debuted with the Kodak team here three years ago. Brett Bodine makes his 12th Atlanta start. Morgan Shepard, who has two victories here, and former Winston Cup champ Terry Labonte in row four. Ted Musgrave is ninth on the grid and ninth in the point standing. Kenny Schrader won this race in 1991. Derek Cope, strong start for the Cale Yarborough team, and Dick Trickle was third here four years ago. Rick Mast had the pole here last November, and Ricky Rudd won this race in 87. Bill Elliott, defending champion of the Motorcraft 500, and Harry Gant, three second place finishes here. Bobby Labonte, one of those top rookie drivers, and Jimmy Spencer from the Bobby Allison Ford. In row 10, Bobby Hillen finished sixth here in 88, and Sterling Marlin in the Stavola car. Row 11, Jeff Bodine, fourth of the point parade, and Mike Waltrip was fifth here two years ago. Former Rookie of the Year Bobby Hamilton lines up alongside Rick Wilson and Richard Petty Pontiac. Bill Parsons starts his first race here in four years. He's off to a good run this season, so is Kenny Wallace, a promising rookie. Kyle Petty has eight top ten finishes here. Lake Speed, the go-kart champ. Defending Winston Cup champ Alan Kulwicki is one of the drivers way back in the pack next to Joe Rutman. And in the 16th row finds Davey Allison looking for his first Atlanta win. Jimmy Horton alongside. Dale Jarrett, the point leader, is deep in the field today. So is Hunt Strickland, who's seventh in the points. There's Darrell Waltrip. Worst start of his Winston Cup career, 35th today. Wally Dollaback alongside. Jimmy Means is back from the injuries at Daytona. He starts next to Dave Marcus. And the final row is Bob Shack from Illinois, and Greg Sachs replaces P.J. Jones in the Harry Melling Ford. P.J. driving for Dan Gurney's Toyota team today in the 12 hours of Sebring. The point leaders look like this. Jared, just a point ahead of Earnhardt, Martin, Bodine, and Wallace. And look how they're shuffled through this starting lineup. Wallace and Earnhardt on the front row. Jared, Martin, and Bodine will start this race a little further back. Martin in third, of course. But as you get deeper in the points, things scramble up even more. Alan Kowicki is sixth. Strickland, Allison, Musgrave, and Gordon, position six through ten. Look how they're jumbled up on the start. Three more of the top ten way deep in the field. Fifteen position. But look at that. Five drivers are knotted within just 17 points. And they, too, are sprinkled throughout this starting lineup. He'll be riding along with three cars today. Rusty Wallace in the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac from the pole. He'll be riding with Rusty. The standard race cam bolted to the roll cage gives you this view, and it tilts and pans. And also we'll have a face cam in Rusty's car. You rode with him at work at Rockingham when he rode to victory here on TNN. Also we'll be driving with Jeff Bodine and Mark Martin today. Let's look further back in the field. Here's Jeff Bodine's motorcraft board, the Bud Moore car, and again the standard race cam on it just over his shoulder. 
And we'll have a suspension cam in the right front of Jeff's ride. Looks a little different from the bobsled he's been working on. Also, Mark Martin will be carrying our third in-car camera in the Jack Roush Valvoline Ford. There's the race cam inside Mark's car. And the roof cam. That's the best look at what Mark Martin sees as he comes around the corner of turn four and we prepare for the start of the Motorcraft 500. 328 laps around this mile and a half oval. Quarter mile straightaways, half mile turns. Wallace and out in front of Bernhardt as they come down for the green flag. Mark Martin drives on in the second on the inside of turn one. Bernhardt right back at him. Takes over second. Back straight away. Jump. That yellow car is Ernie Irvin moving up on the inside of rookie Jeff Gordon. And Rusty Wallace leads his first lap in Atlanta since the spring of 1990. I think he might have at Roadway's transmission, and I think they really got out of here when they got He and Earnhardt jumped out from everybody. Side by side, fourth place. And rookie Jeff Gordon trying to edge in front of Ernie Irvin. This was going to be a good race with this racetrack. You can run high and low. A lot of tracks we go to, there's a real preferred line. With this track here, you can run high or low and get around here quick. First lap, 174 and a half miles an hour. They're single file back through about 10 spot. Rusty Wallace has opened up about seven car lanes. On her car, Mark Martin, Ernie Urban, Jeff Gordon in fifth, Brett Bodine in his sixth, Morgan Shepard seventh. Kenny Schrader moving up to take a break. time here only an hour and a half yesterday as we look back in the pack where Kyle Petty, Davey Allison, Darrell Wallace, Dale Jarrett are trying to move up through. This is where there's a big concern at this racetrack, Mike. We saw the last race of the season last year. Davey Allison in the points bound get tangled up in traffic. You really got to be careful. Buddy mentioned top of the show how if you have a wreck it clogs the whole track up so they've got to be concerned with this kind of traffic. Like he pushed up in the center part of the corner and Mark just drove away from him. I mean, Mark in practice yesterday, he and Rusty Wallace were the fastest two cars that is showing right now that they're still the fastest. About 90 minutes of practice yesterday. Let's look at drivers. And for a week layoff due to snow here last weekend. Wallace with a 1.4 second lead. There's Mark Martin's view of the rest of the field. Irvin and Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon, like Daytona Deja Vu. Well, I tell you what, the four car got completely sideways in, and he backed out of it a little bit. He's checking up on it to make sure he don't have a dark or something, because that car got completely sideways. Morgan Shepard is with him. There's Schrader's white car, the Kodiak car, and he's going to nine. Schrader started 10, he's moved up with the 25 car, and now goes underneath Morgan Shepard. Gordon and Earnhardt. Gordon is not content to ride this time. Looks like he's learned a lot. He's in a race and run with Earnhardt for second position. Excuse me, a third position. Cleared him. Field back to the front straightaway. Six times on the board. Wallace, then Jeff Gordon, Earnhardt, Herman, and Shepard. Let's go down to Pitt Road and check with Randy Pemberton. Well, we talk about Jeff Gordon, and what a story this Trouble in turn one, Randy. One car apparently has lost a motor. First down is Bob Norris, track that's Bob Shaft. The second year driver out of Illinois, who came off the Arca circuit, there's oil down the front straightaway, and we're under caution. Let's go back to Randy. We'll check back there in a moment. Shaft is going to coast around, and it looks like to the garage area. First caution flag of the day. As he came down the front straightaway, it just exploded. Seven laps were under caution with Rusty Wallace leading Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon. We'll be right back to Atlanta Motor Speedway live on TNN. We're back live at Atlanta and we're under caution. Here's the way the top five are running as several cars have visited Pit Road. Watching these pictures from behind the rundown of the top ten. It's an aerial view of Atlanta here. Atlanta Motor Speedway is on 
the Terry Gant is being the defense with the hoodie. Yeah, you know, some other cars came in this car, so they had a lot of practice time making chassis adjustments. Gant's got some kind of major problem there on the hood. It's a shame Terry usually runs really well in this race car, too. He's only here three times for his first win. Now he's still on the lead lap. It goes back out. Jeff Lodon also got up. Right away, he's still on the pit road. He's doing an adjustment on the board. Right there. Here's Lodon going back out. First caution of the day for Bob Shack Sanjay. We invite your comments here on TNN and more specifically your questions about this race. If there's something that you're seeing that you'd like to know more about, call us up. It's toll free 1 800 451 7331. Operators are standing by. Stephanie and Sheila will take your questions there in Nashville, forward them to us, and we'll pass them on to the order. And my colleagues, Buddy Baker and Neil Bonnet, try to get your answers. Any questions we can't use on today's show, we'll forward on to Inside Winston Cup Racing and Race Day. And you may see them there on TNN. So. Wallace, the leader from lap one. Kyle Petty has come from 27th to 20th. Alan Kulwicki started 29th, he's up to 23rd. Jeff Gordon, who's the third place car behind Mark Martin, ahead of Dale Earnhardt and Ernie Irvin. Let's get out of pit road, Randy Pemberton. Well, just before the crash of the blown engine, we were speaking of Jeff Gordon. He has really taken the Winston Cup world by storm, but it was last year here that he won a Bush Grand National race, his first ever on this Atlanta track. Now, this year here, he's got two top 10 finishes already. One top five, and I'll tell you where he qualified, guys. All the people were talking about him in the garage area. Expect him to be a contender all day long. He's still just 21 years old, and this kid can actually go to victory lane here today. One of three talented rookies in this field, all off the Bush series that we covered in depth last year. Gordon, Bobby Labonte, Kenny Wallace, Neil arguably, Jeff Gordon, quickest out of the box, but we talked to Bobby Labonte last night at dinner. They've made some changes, so they expect that forward of theirs to run much better this weekend through the season and, and Kenny Wallace too coming up to speed. Remember most of the Bush drivers have not seen this racetrack, not driven here. Jeff Gordon did race here last year so he may have a leg up on the other two rookies at the moment. We are still under caution and it looks like one to go. We will we will get a restart here. You know Mike Rusty jumped out that big lead a week ago when the weather was bad in the practice sessions. He was always the quickest car and they unloaded the thing yesterday, and he's been quick. It's, uh, when one, it seems like sometimes you take the car track and everything is just right. He's going to take a strong car to, to get around him. The early practice times from yesterday afternoon showed he was the quickest. Well, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to see when they drop the green flag. I think the six car is running just as well as he is. Talk about Jeff Gordon and the guys that are running the rookie right here. I don't know if he has had three guys that can win that game. Uh, the quality of that is each one of those guys is going to have parts in here that they're really going to dominate as far as the rookie of the year campaign. It's been a long time since we had this talented or working crop. Rusty clearing the tires off, getting the debris off of the tires for the restart. See this car shaking around, just getting that build up off because they, they sail off in this first turn at the same kind of mile per hour that you see at Daytona Town League, the big tracks. It's plenty fast. Gant, Bodine, and Jimmy Means pitted under the caution. On the restart, it'll be Rusty Wallace. Mark Martin in second, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin in fifth, Morgan Shepard, Kenny Schrader, Brett Bodine. As we get set to wind things up here once again, one caution so far for Bob Shack, an engine, down the front straightaway. And we're getting ready to go back to green. Base car is in. Green flag. At lap 10. I know you do a lot of testing for Earnhardt. We have a special transmission that accelerates and restarts better than the rest of the world. A lot of these teams just don't use that jet code, but you know yourself, which is like a road race transmission, gives you a lot better gear selection, and a lot of the guys are working on these things accelerate up to speed. It's so critical. Boy, look at that. That makes me homesick there, Neil. Yes, look, that's as close to it being a race car driver as anybody ever wants to be. That's exactly what it looked like, folks. Right? Well, look at the dirt. You know, I saw Rusty go in and wear the motor blue the lap before. Sling up a little bit of smoke. I thought it was smoke, but he just uh, threw it over the racetrack. Oil dry. Chunks of rubber that come off some of his cars. It's a plastic uh, film of plastic.
plastic over the lens of that roof cam on Mark Martin's car. It slides across to keep that lens clean. Pass for second, and they're beginning to jumble up here back at uh, second or third spot on back. As Earnhardt got the jump on the lead, here comes Jeff right back by him again. I think Earnhardt's got a pushing position in the center of the corner, and he's having a problem. Watch the 21 car. Morgan Shepard on the bottom there. Two of his three most important victories have come here at Atlanta. He's always going to get this race track and work for his car. He's been having this good combination for that. And I think one other thing we're seeing also, we see Jeff Gordon right there with Earnhardt. All the races we've been to before, he says, I'm going to take it easy. I think we see the guys ready to go racing. I think they're going to kind of turn him loose and they're going to get after these guys. I tell you, though, he's going to be on a bad place on the inside of Earnhardt. If Earnhardt will pull down tight on you and then go back down and go in the corner and make that car extremely loose. The other quick car in this field is Ken Schrader. Schrader's just moved past Ernie Irvin. in the marbles on the top part of the racetrack in the front end took off. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, I asked Richard Childress to call him and let him make sure that if he was loose, and he said he is. He's having to run up high because he just simply can't turn the wheel. When he tries to turn the wheel, the car, the back end of the car tries to get out from under him. It's a problem they're going to have to contend with. They're going to have to fix as soon as they get a chance. Because one problem that the guys were looking for today was tires. The racetrack got much practice, so therefore, Tire wear is going to be critical early on, so uh, he's got a problem we're going to have to take care of. Pretty soon. Back. Update you a little on schedule adjustments. The Bush Grand National Race scheduled to run concurrently with the, today's event has been rescheduled for November, Saturday of the Winston Cup weekend. And the race that TNN had hoped to bring you tomorrow from Martinsville, Virginia, the Bush Grand National Race, that has been postponed until May. TNN will be there in Martinsville when they run that event. Seconds behind the leader is this battle. Wallace, by the way, has been caught by Mark Martin. See Ricky Rudd, Terry Labonte coming up in the picture. We saw Morgan Shepard move up there with the four car. He tried to challenge him for a while. He's fell back just a little bit. Now the five car is right in there trying to get around Shepard. So if you just move just a little bit, the guy's a game on the side. Check that on Pit Road. Here's Randy. Well, gentlemen, Harry Gant started 16th. Now he's finished second here three times. Today, his luck not going so good. He's falling back to 39th running over in the field. The guys were frantic right after that last caution. Here's the problem. He's got a carburetor problem. They're going to change it under caution. Well, I'll tell you what, buddy, they might change it under caution, but they're going to need a long caution. It takes a while to change the carburetor on that. And it just takes them a lot of work to get that off and another one back on. I guarantee you, I would hate to have a problem with the carburetor here because you're in the corner so much. You have to have a lot of uh, uh, torque and everything for a car to run around. You don't need a problem with your carburetor. Three Chevrolet's back in for that. Bernie Irvin in the car. Right now, Terry Labonte, Kellogg's car. We see these cars. A lot of the tracks we go to, we've talked about the guy on the inside really gets an edge. If you'll notice, the inside guy has to lift a little bit earlier getting down in that corner because if he drives in hard, he'll slide up and hit the other one. So you've got to roll out a little bit earlier getting in the bottom. That guy gets on around you. We are 20 laps into the Motorcraft 500. There are the two leaders. Keeping close tabs on one another, Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin. Welcome back to the Motorcraft 500, live on the National Network. Mark Martin has taken the lead from Rusty Wallace, and Buddy Baker called it two laps before it happened. Let's show you how it went, Buddy. Okay. The, the thing that Mark has right now is his car is handling extremely well, and he can run the lower part of the racetrack where Rusty had to go up, and he just went right on by. This car is flying. Lead change at lap 24, and here's how it looks like now. Clear sailing ahead for Mark Martin. Every driver wants to see. Here's the onboard Ford Electronics telemetry in Mark Martin's car. Let's watch the mile per hour here. We see 188. In, in qualifying, we saw 188 mile an hour. In qualifying, these guys reach 190, 193 miles an hour. 
That's a big Daytona Tile Lady Speeds. Look at the RPM down through here. We're not going down the front straight away. 183 miles an hour, 4, 6, 88 again. About 8,000 RPM. These things are flying around this racetrack. From this thing with half mile turns and quarter mile straightaways, they're getting it done. Let's ride along, give it a listen for a lap here. What's the leader, Mark Martin? You see him touch the brake there. That's a little unusual. That means the car must be pushing this way. You know, he has to just touch the brake and make it down. He's pushing fast. <laughs> <laughs> just barely taps the brake. That's what's unusual about this race track. If you don't notice, he touches the gas really on the straight right. Excuse me, the brake. He gets to slow down. He's right back in the throttle before he ever gets in the corner all the way. Really run hard through these corners. That might be, he's a left foot breaker. He might just have his foot just bouncing on there because it does not look like he's really using the brake now. No, it feels good just to touch it, make sure it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> I've written a lot of times, it's not needed, but I always matched it, make sure it's still there. I need it in a hurry. He's gradually pulling away from Rusty Wallace. 800 questions uh, coming in. Where pole position came from? Boy, oh boy, I have no idea. I'm sure you know though. Right, you're the only guy here old enough, I think, to know. I'm not. There was a Polish driver named Oscar Kowaleski that always claimed the pole position, but that was Can Am Oscar racing. who? Never mind. Oh, jeez. <laughs> At uh, the Kentucky Derby, they paint the winner's colors up on top of a horse that's on a pole. I don't know. Greg Field will find that out for him. It is a horse racing term. Here's Rusty running in second. He really led from the pole. Well, look what a lead they have over third place. The six car and two, Rusty Wallace got a good lead. Jeff Gordon, that's Kenny Schrader right in behind Jeff Gordon. He's starting to try to run a higher line. He's getting done up there, And you'll see a black car coming in the right and focus there. That's Earnhardt. He's making a line back up through there. What happens here? You have to start the car real loose to make it really work later on when the car. The tendency is to get tighter as you go. Look like Earnhardt's on the right now, too. Jeff Gordon, who runs in third. Schrader closing in. Schrader started 10. That's what's unique about this racetrack. It's about 70 feet wide, and you can use all of it. A lot of tracks we go to, you have a 100 foot of racing service, there's 10 of it used there. This racetrack, you can race all the way around. Here's the great field of new. He's our historian. In horse racing, the rail along the inside of the track was also called the pole. So the horse that started closest to the rail had the pole position. Many early auto races ran on horse tracks. That's where the turn came from. I just want to make sure they don't ever call the question right there. Right, they won't now. Bill Parsons is on the hood up. Had a couple of strong ones this season. New paint job on the man. And a new guy, Waddell Wilson, moved over there to help them with the running the team. That's such a good driver. If it's closed back down, now they're looking See Morgan Shepard here, but these lead cars are pretty well settled in. They're all going. We're going to see a big change on this first caution. When we get the first normal pit stop, whenever it does come, we can see some chassis adjustments made. These guys are just going to test the cars. That car is brighter than it looks on television. Car drove right by him. I thought something happened to the second car. So there's Mark Martin as you ride along from the roof cam on the Dalvin car. And the Miller Pontiac and Rusty Wallace just hit that front straightaway here. Your buddy told us earlier just how narrow it was. Mike, they would take a look. 
up here and said he's turning less RPM. That's about 100 less RPM and about six or seven miles an hour different than we saw him before. This, this right here might tell us that he's got something wrong with the motor. We were seeing 8,200 with 188 miles an hour on this shot right here before. Let's see if he gets it up there. Still a lot of mile per hour. It doesn't seem to be anything wrong. Maybe the car got a little loose or something, but he certainly fell back in a hurry. We'll see. 35 laps down. Rusty Wallace, the leader. Mark Martin in second. Kenny Schrader is third. Jeff Gordon is fourth. Dale Earnhardt in fifth. Atlanta Motor Speedway, Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker. 38 laps completed. TNN's live coverage of the Motorcraft 500. And it has been the Martin Rusty Show. Rusty Wallace, the early going for the Martin, went to the front. Rick Wilson, Rusty P. Pontiac. Dave Marcus, also a lap down. Phil Parsons has gone to the garage. He's lost an engine, as has Bob Shack. Hey, Mark Martin must have had something like his foot slipped off the accelerator or something. He didn't do as well as anybody out there. And his car is handling perfect. It's just one of those deals that you have things happen on the racetrack every once in a while. You just check up on them to check that out. Probably. Let's we're, go back, uh, we're going to go back, Neil, to the in-car camera and uh, try to show you what happened when Mark Martin lost the lead. This is from Mark Martin's car here. All right, here he is. This is coming up on the back straightaway. See him going down the middle of the back straightaway. Boy, I, that's what, you know, the reason I jumped up so much while ago, it's almost like Mark just pulled over and let him by. Rusty was up alongside him and only two and made the pass. Here's the race for fourth. The Wood Brothers car, that's the same as Gordon Shepard. Had won 11 races at Atlanta, but the last one of those, Neil Bonnet won in 1981. Boy, was that fun. <laughs> You might as well mash your gas and go. All of the Rick Hendrick cars are in the top six position. Schrader, Gordon, and Rudd. Mike, I'll tell you what, one thing about the car is on a short basis. Anything internally learned to one car is passed on. I'm not sure it's only done. And if it's done properly, it should make each car better. They should spread that knowledge around. And it's just a matter if they do it or not. Back up over Earnhardt. Went around him on the outside. It looks like both of them are gaining on the 24 car. Car just pushed now. As they battle here for third place, Rusty Wallace is pulling away. There's still quite a distance on this car. There for a while he was dropping back. Now he's on the run again. I don't know what's going on. These cars run like crazy for 10 or 12 laps and then drop back. Again, they did not get a lot of practice here. 
yesterday after a week's layoff, and the cars sat in the garage area. As they had already qualified, they were not allowed to leave from the speedway. The guys that are going to get a lot of practice will be these pit crews when, yes. they, come, when they come in the pits the first time. They're liable to put the air wrenches on those jack screws and make some chassis adjustments. We saw Schrader pass the 24. Now that there's Rick Mass dropping the inside. And we now we see the 24 back in front. It's Richard Jackson four. Stole ride of Rick Mass. He was on the pole here last November. He started deep in the field today. Too early yeah. for a caution. I mean for a pit stop, he must have a problem. Disappointed because this morning he told me he felt really good about the car. He said in practice yesterday it's about the third or fourth fastest car here, and he found have problems this early. Up goes the hood. See, even though they're working on the hood, see the guy putting the chassis adjustment in the right rear. He said, "Help me get this thing driving better." If they get the motor problems, so that's just an indication that it's a lot of chassis adjustments. One of our 800 calls. How do they time the speeds of the cars? They don't use radar as you might expect. Roman standing just outside the booth to our right. NASCAR has stopwatches and the time the cars on pit road with stopwatches between measured points to make sure they're obeying the speed limit. You either obey or you go to the rear. Yeah. <laughs> There's Mark Martin running in second place. Let's go down to his pit. Glenn is with Jack Roush. Well, Mikey appears to have closed the gap just a little bit again. You're looking at Jack Roush, who owns and engineers the car that Martin drives. He's keeping lap times. Let's ask Jack if there is a problem. Jack, when Mark was leading, he seemed to slow dramatically there all at once and let Rusty by. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything just fine. The car's a little too loose to suit him, and when Rusty would get on him, it would make it bad loose. So he, he thought that they would lap more cars and it would go better if he just followed Rusty for a while. They're working together. Okay, a little early race strategy by Mark Martin. Now, somebody explain this from 9 million people in the world. Rusty takes the air off Mark's spoiler, and Mark's car doesn't work as well. Right. What? <laughs> what actually happens is the air flows of the car. When the car behind you gets up to it, it robs the air off the trunk of the car and moves it back over on your car. And it, it almost it makes it back into the car light when you're up under it. The air has to lift like a snow plow underneath the car and lift it back up. Now, when you're behind, of course, the air is on the front of your car, and it tends to make it tighter, so that's what happened. Well, that's why Mark Martin relinquished the lead to Rusty Wallace. Those two cars are still well ahead of the rest of the field, and here's the battle a little further back. This is for fifth place. Morgan Shepard taking it. Taylor, Ricky Run right there. Joe Rutman, Bobby Hamilton have each gone a lap down. So is Rick Wilson and Dave Marcus. One of these cars that we see running at the top of the racetrack wouldn't necessarily want to be that high. They're just making adjustments with the steering wheel over the center of the fans because the car won't stay low, so they just have to chase it up the racetrack. That's like Earnhardt came out the first race. I thought he was pushing, but when he had that handling problem, the first thing you do is find out where you can run on the racetrack. When he went up high, he found out that he didn't have to make that abrupt dangle into the corner, and it made it drive a lot better for running around the outside. Leaders working into traffic now. That's the Hurley limo car. But you good to see Jimmy Beans back behind the wheel. After that uh, practice crash at Daytona, talked about it. We'll mention, I'm uh, seeing right now, but we'll mention that Alan Kowicki is sneaking up through the field. Started 29th, he's running 12th. So is Ricky Rudd. He just don't steady move right on that. He's really good on flip track. It's hard to sneak with a car coming like that. <laughs> There's the stealth car right behind him. Hot Strickland goes way up the racetrack. Yeah, he's been just been going a lap down. He's having some trouble. He's off the pace. He's a lap down. Every Winston Cup and Bush Grand National race so far this year has been won by a black car. Get the spray bombs out here. <laughs> Maybe so. Fifty-two laps complete. Rusty Wallace leading. Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, and Ken Schrader. Last week here at Atlanta, instead of the race, it was the blizzard of '93. 
We asked Rusty Wallace how he spent the time in the blizzard. No, I didn't have any delays in my problem. We did have a delay in that motorhome of mine on the way home. The throttle stuck wide open in rush hour traffic in Atlanta. And I thought we were going to kill everybody. We finally got her off the side of the road and got the key turned off. But he almost read about us wrecking a motorhome. 57 laps are complete and pit stops are beginning as we speak. Rusty Wallace, the leader, has pulled the pit road. That will give Mark Martin back to the lead. Speed limit in effect at all the Winston Cup tracks. So we've got to be careful. Mark Martin was putting a lot of pressure on Rusty right there before this happened. So Rusty's coming in, put some fuel on there. If you're running this good, you can't afford to run out of gas. So he's coming in early. Earnhardt is also in, so is Joe Rutman and Harry Gant. And a chassis change on Rusty's car. Chassis change. How many rounds that look like to you, Nate? Until he got tired. <laughs> he to the boy's hand out. You'll see that at this racetrack. You can't be content, even though you're leading the race, you can't get, be content with that chassis. This track will change all day long when you get chasing. Wallace, 18.7 seconds on our Keystone pit clock. Four rounds, or maybe five, in the left rear Bernhardt, so he's making on that chassis, too. They're trying to tighten him up. 21.1 seconds on her. Terry Labotte, Jimmy Spencer are on pit road. So is Michael Walker. Again, it just ran out of fuel down the back straightaway just prior to this. I see another car going down the back straightaway coasting. So these guys might be pushing it a little too far. We'll see them all coming in. Bobby Hamilton going slow. Jimmy Horton is in. Again, ran out of coasting in. The other Rusty came in over power. Wait a minute. Didn't they put fuel in Harry's car in the pits? No, that was Rick Mash. Let me tell you, though, that. when you have the top breaker trouble, you'll use more fuel than if it's running like you should. There's the Bojangles car, Derek Cope, and Kyle Petty started deep in the field. We should explain why so many of those cars are still yeah, Many of the top drivers started way back. But the first, let's go to Randy. Well, Bill has pulled in. He's got a little bit of a crease along the left front tire. It's going to be a four-tire stop. Mike Beam screw over the wall, already coming around on the left-hand side. They said the car was just a little bit loose prior to that stop. All these cars experience different, different problems so far. Some are loose, some are pushing. Bill is down and away. Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon are in nose to tail. And that was your first and second place cars after Mark Martin pit, I mean, after Rusty pit it. You see if I get a chance the adjustment on the sixth car. There they go in the right rear seat, cranking around the right rear Jeff Gordon. All the cars, even though they're leading the race, they're not hesitating to change the chassis a little bit. Clock running on Mark Martin, stopped 21 7. Gordon's was faster. He came in much later. He came out right with him. Well, that was really good. A new team being able to get out there. Mark Martin and run along on the pit stop like that. We saw Rusty go by as they were coming out of the pit, so he's going to get a good lead on him. Kenny Schrader takes over the lead. Chevrolet of Rick Hendrick. Ricky Rudd is on pit road. Alan Kalicki, Joe Rutman, and Darrell Walter have stopped. And now Schrader comes in. Yeah, you can't afford that. If you're a good running car here, you run out at the start finish line at this racetrack. It takes forever to coast back around. So they're going to have to get in quick. We'll finish uh, pit stops and then we'll update the field. Let's stick up champ. Alan Kalicki is in. They're finishing up the right side on Kalicki's car as pit stops continue under green. Lap 62. Jeff Bodine had taken the lead and makes a 21.3 second pit stop by Bud Moore's crew. Bobby Labonte is on pit road. He had moved up to second place. And here's your new leader, Wally Dollenbeck in the Keystone Ford. He is up front. He has yet to make a pit stop in the second Jack Roush Ford. Stretching that mileage on. I tell you what, that's what's good for Jack Roush. He takes a six car. He brings it in early. He can use his 16 car, which is his other team car, to see how far he can possibly go. And during the course of the day, he can relate that back to the other car. So he can play with this car to see what that lead car can do mileage-wise. Wally Donovan is leading his first ever race to cover it. That That's Wally? not his first race, but it's his, the first time he has left. Is that Wally or Dave? Dave. Uh, his neighbor, you know, he takes it out for a spin. Oh, I saw that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's well. That's right. Former SCCA Trans Am champion. A great road racer. His dad, of course, longtime Indy car racer. Park director of competition. And here's Ted Musgrave moving right up. And goodbye. He's waving his hand. I'm not so sure he might not have went too far in the field because he slowed down a little bad for about the second turn. That will hand the lead back to Musty Wallace. 
flashing by at the top of the screen momentarily. Dollaback will be the last car in the lead lap. Okay. Let's get down to Dale Earnhardt's pit as Earnhardt is now running in eighth position. Here's Glenn. Well, Mike, after that major chassis adjustment, I wanted to find out just what they did. This is Andy Peaches of Gucci. Andy had a lot of wedge cranked into that car. Were they able to do anything for us? Well, we took a lot of wedge out of it, actually. That was good. Turn two, turn four. We're trying to work on it right now, you know. We'll just try this adjustment to see. We're going to run real hot and try to take care of some of the push. You know, maybe we've helped it. Okay. Okay, well, we were told earlier that he had a loose condition, but it turns out, Buddy Baker, you were right on the money. I do that all the time, Glenn. <laughs> Here's Wallace. He's the new leader. He has a 2.1 second lead over Jeff Gordon, lapping past Jimmy Means. And Mark Martin has now gone towards second place, moving underneath Jeff Gordon. We see the six car. He just passed the 24 the last lap around. These guys have swapped the lead back and forth about three times the last five laps. You know what made that impressive is they got caught up in traffic a while ago, and of course, Jeff Gordon being younger, he took a lot of chances and got a jump on the six car, but Mark just took his time, worked his way through the traffic, and now he's just running down and went right on by. I'll tell you, Mark Martin is going to be hard to handle. In We've had a lot of questions about the snow out and what the teams can and can't do. When the race was snowed out, the cars were impounded with Mark and they've been qualified and then when the teams came back in the garage area wasn't open until yesterday noon but the teams could change anything they could change in the course of a normal Winston Cup practice day to get these cars ready to race today and a lot of them did change engines because they had sat in these cars in the cold during the week and, and made chassis and other changes in response to what they learned during the practice session so yesterday was just like any other day before a race here it was just very short with a lot of work in a short amount of time Yovanet spent yesterday in Texas qualifying Dale Earnhardt's car for the, what is it, Arco, Winston, West, and everybody else come on and run race tomorrow. 64 about there trying to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. You knew what I had to pole line to establish your choice on, on tires. If I whether you run you or use tires, the ball is going to cost you about that. Maybe I just didn't go past it. <laughs> <laughs> Today, carrying our onboard camera, as is Mark, or as is Rusty Wallace and Jeff Bodine. Mike from Missouri called in, and yes, the drivers can refuse the in-car camera. Some teams don't like to have it, especially at certain racetracks where weight distribution is a real big factor as to how those cars are chosen. It's a combination of editorial judgment by the network staff, and sometimes advertising considerations come into play. Companies that advertise on the telecast are often offered the first opportunity. If they keep winning races with that camera, we'll get more bids for it all the time. Seems like it's a lucky piece to have in the car. Lately. Paul from Long Island called in and uh, asked where the lug nuts come from when they change tires. You see them take a tire off, the lug nuts whiz away. It's worth recapping that for Paul and you other new NASCAR fans. Here's Randy. Hey guys, you talk about lug nuts. This is the lug nut can for the Jeff Bodine team. There's probably 300 lug nuts in this can. Now here's what they do. They get a bunch of lug nuts and they glue them onto the wheel. Right here, this is weather stripping. That's all it is. They put weather stripping on the hub of this tire. Now you ask, well, how do they get onto the, uh, to the, the wheel itself? What it is, is a tapered stud that's on the wheel. It's just like that. When they jam this wheel up onto the hub, these nuts will sit on the stud and they can drill them in. So they put a little weather stripping on there just to hold the lug nuts in place, just to tack them, and that's all they do. Kind of like sophisticated rubber cement, just to tack them in place there. And one thing they'll do is they'll do it right before the race. They don't want their weather stripping to actually set up. It's in a tacky position, so it actually strings off like spider web when they put it up on the wheel. So what if you took somebody's cement can and swapped it for epoxy? Oh, man, that, that's, that's about some super glue. That's, that messes up a little bit. Just a bit. Rusty Wallace is the race leader at 77 laps. There's Mark Martin, top of the screen, in second. Jeff Gordon is third. An appropriate question called in. The last time a rookie won a Winston Cup race, Davey Allison did it twice in 1987. He won two races that year in his rookie season. That's the last year to win. A lot of folks think it could happen sometime this year as well. He won Talladega and Dover. And where is he today? 19th place, well back. I would say Rick Hendricks is probably enjoying this race. He's got three cars in the top five right now. I'd say his 
Five odds are pretty good right now, too, and you? It's so hard to get a car to run up front in the second. They have three up there, they're getting a homework done. Wallace is the leader. There's Mark Martin. There's Jeff Gordon. You should check the interval going back. are complete. There's Wallace, there is Mark Martin, and there's Buddy Parrott engineering Rusty Wallace's drive today. 82 laps. There's your race leader Rusty Wallace pulling up on a lapped car. Mark Martin is closing in just a bit. It was 19th place on the tail end of the lead lap. His car moving quite well before the pit stop. Not quite so well after. US Air Jasper Engines Ford of Musgrave out of Wisconsin. When we get into a situation like this, Mike, and a lot of long green running, these cars as quick as they are just race back, they're going to start back with some really good cars. And once they get down, it's going to be hard to get that back. Well, let's look back, find your favorite driver. There's the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac of Rusty Wallace. He's our race leader. There's second place, the Valvoline Ford of Mark Martin. As they go off into turn number one. Third place, Pontiac, Jeff Gordon in the DuPont Chevrolet, Rick Henry car. And his teammate is the next car back. That'll be Ricky Rudd in fourth place in the Tide Chevrolet. Jimmy Means car is running in 33rd, two laps down. Darrell Waltrip is one lap down in 21st. There's Kenny Schrader, the fifth place car in the Kodiak Chevrolet. Schrader, sixth place, Morgan Shepard in the Citgo Ford of the Wood Brothers. Mr. Blake Speed was in 20 seconds, back down. Speed from the bottom. The car behind him is Jimmy Spencer, who is also on the line back. The Meineke Ford on 12. Behind the Purex car, Blake Speed. Next in line, Dave Marcus, the 71 car. He's three laps off the pace, and then there's Dick Trickle and Bobby Labonte. He is one lap down in 25th position in the Maxwell House. Next back is Ernie Urban in the Kodak Chevrolet. He is seventh. And right in the middle, rookie Ryan Wallace. Wallace one lap back at 26th. Change for the lead. Looks wow. Like he made that look easy, man. Yeah, he ran it down from a long way back. And just, just as easy as he gave it a lead away while he was able to take it back. Six cars. He was probably three seconds back from the more than 10 laps ago. Check it out right now. It seems to me that the six cars are really strong from the center of the corner to the straightaway. You know, it really accelerates well. I mean, it's, it's always been a torque car here in Atlanta. They always run well here, and it's all up to Michigan. Let's pick up our rundown once again, buddy. Eighth, ninth, and tenth are right here. Eighth place was Earnhardt. Now it's Bill Elliott, the Budweiser Ford. Now it's the good run Chevrolet of Earnhardt. They are eighth and ninth. Terry Labonte, the Kellogg Chevrolet, is tenth. What's a Bill Elliott right here? He's always been able to come to Atlanta when he's down and out a little bit and really kind of salvage something, get back on top. They're off the pace a little bit this year. Bill needs a good run at his home track here to get back on top. He's the eighth place car right now. That back is Bobby Hillen, who was one lap back in 27th. That's the Heilig Myers furniture car, that teal color number 90. Brett Bodine moving up under him. He is the 12th place car, the Quaker State car. As the Bodine brother back, Jeff Bodine is right with him. Jeff is in 13th position. His brother Brett up behind this car. Now it's Labonte moving up and underneath the challenger. Going a lap down the wall. 
Phillips. Right, the Quaker State four, Jeff in the Motorcraft four. They're on the lead lap, battling with Earnhardt and with Terry Labonte. And Kyle Petty coming up into view. Favorite drivers running. Hardy's update. Man, I'd love to be able to do what I need to do to this chassis under the other It's not handling very well at all. And Labonte looks like he'll finally complete that pass. He's been working and working. His car works good on the bottom of the track. He just can't quite get enough to where he pull over. He can get over to him, but after pulling over, he's done. Not this time. Yeah, I'd have to say that the three cars, the car is the toughest car out there to get back. He races every inch, no matter how bad or how good the car is. He gets all the way. see, both of them have to try and we'll take a look at him. So let's get out of his 14 car and see if we can help him get on by. They might be able to all work together and do it. Look at Labonte. Boy, he just about got him here, but here he comes back on the outside. <laughs> just about had enough room to move on. This looks like he's going to be able to move on. He's going to up there on that very top. The only problem is that you, you flow good enough, but if you ever slip a little bit, you're in a lot of trouble for that high on the racetrack. Jeff Bryant's car. There's a little sign in the right lower corner of the screen that's handwritten. It says call 1 800 Bobsled. That's the project that Jeff's involved with in this new Bodine Bobsled for the U.S. Olympic team. That number is not active right now, but it will be later this week. And they are looking for corporate sponsorship and donations to send the Olympic Bobsled team. Lola Hammer Norway next year with a winning sled. Again, it's 1 800 bobsled, and they'll have that number operative the middle of next week for more information or to, to help support the team. Did you say Little Hammer? Little Hammer. Oh, okay. <laughs> You've never raced there. It's okay. <laughs> Don't bet on it. <laughs> There's Jeff. He's been on the red for a long time. The green card, now the red one, which is Jeff and I went random on the outside. He looked like he might be able to run the others down. He followed his brother while he couldn't pick up the pace enough, so he went all around him. Okay, let's drift a little further back behind the Rhode Island brothers. Here's Kyle Petty, who's running in 13th position, just ahead of Dale Jarrett, Alan Kulwicki, Derek Cook, and Mike Waldron, the last car in the lead lap. Davey Allison just going to lap down. So let's check into Kyle's pit. Here's Randy. So Kyle started 27th, and he's up to 13th. You might not think that's too bad, but it is for these guys. They've got a little bit of a pushing problem. Buddy, you said a while ago about Mark Martin's car being able to go from the middle of the corner out. Well, that's exactly what these guys try to make these cars do, and that's where Kyle is hurting. The car will not run from the middle out. That's where this particular team likes to make up their time. Robin said the car's pushing. They're going to try, Robin Pemberton and the crew chief, they're going to try to put a little wedge in, maybe uh, move a little air pressure around to see if they can get it. But they desperately want to caution, likewise for a lot of other teams. Desperately in the Kyle is not all that far in front of the race leader. Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace. I'll tell you what, and Mark Martin is going around this race track and he can run high or low, and he's going to put a lot of good race cars down the lap. To, normally, if they could work on it a little bit, they wouldn't go a lap down. 2.2 seconds is Mark Martin's lead over Rusty Wallace right now. With Jeff Gordon in third. Where's Rusty? It's kind of like, where's Waldo? Can you spot him in there? Yeah, Rusty's in a traffic jam. He got <laughs> caught, caught in about two or three cars, and it cost him a lot of track time. He got caught behind two cars, and Mark was able to really get away from him. Long way back to second place, and Jeff Gordon closing up. here 
and the front end is pushing on these cars. You got your foot in the accelerator, and it looks like it's going to hit that wall. There's nothing to do but check up on the throttle a little bit so it will turn. So the car that's going to push here is actually more detrimental than one that's loose. Well, there's Gordon just coming up trying to get around the outside of Allison. I'm not so sure that Gordon might, might be a little bit quicker than two car once he gets around baby here. There's one thing for sure, he's using up twice as much racetrack. I can tell you one thing, he's going to do it there again. I thought I'd say Neil Bonham, but he ain't got that far along yet. No. It's Mark Martin leading Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. A couple of cars in danger of being a lap down. Derek Cope is now the last car on the lead lap in the Bojangles car. He is 60. Alan Kowicki is 15. Dale Jarrett is 14. And Kyle Petty is 13. We asked Kyle if the blizzard of 93 caused him any problems here at Atlanta last week. Think of me real to me, probably, I will tell you this, Richard Petty cannot drive in the snow. He might have won a bunch of races on the racetrack, but it's incredible. He took my breath six times before we got out of Atlanta Sunday. <laughs> Welcome back to the Motorcraft 500. Our thanks to the Family Channel for providing their blimp, piloted by Alan Burroughs. Due to these shots of Atlanta Motor Speedway, nice crowd on hand here. This battle goes on for second place, four seconds behind leader Mark Martin. Right up on closer to Rusty Wall. We have a battle here. One guy uses the low side of the racetrack, and Jeff Gordon's running extremely high. And right now, it seems the higher side of the racetrack is a little bit faster. He'll try to drive up on the outside of him. What he's got to do is got to get enough up beside him that Rusty has to give him that outside lane off this corner. Looks like this time he might have done it. See, he's actually made Rusty move over the car lane and get some up and forth. Here goes Ball right on the outside. Like it's pretty good down the street, right? yeah, like will do that. <laughs> Most of them do. <laughs> so second place changes hands. And the rookie driver, Jeff Gordon, 21 years old. Don't let that statistic fool you. He's been driving and winning races since age five. First climbed into one of those thousand horsepower sprint cars at age 14. Last year, set a record for poles on the Bush Grand National Circuit. Now moves into Winston Cup. There's Rusty Wallace in the third right with him. And when they say he's won races, it wasn't just something that was small race here, small race there. He jumped on the big boys from the day he started racing, and it's really paid off. He's had quite an education. He's using it right now. Front three in this race. Chevy for Jeff Gordon and Pontiac for Rusty Wallace. Those are the three makes of cars officially involved in Winston Cup racing. One Oldsmobile did start today's race. But Oldsmobile and Buick are out of this sport officially. He's in 15th position. He won the Winston Cup here last November. And today, just again, a little bit off on the second. He's going to go a lap down. Let's check with Randy. Well, gentlemen, Alan Kowicki was the second up to the last car to go through technical inspection this morning. He was driving the car up and down in the garage area, actually. They changed all the sprays in that car, and they said it would be a crapshoot. The last car to go through inspection was Ricky Rudd. Now, he's running pretty good, but Kowicki obviously did not make the changes he needs. So he's in for a moment. He's putting a lot of pressure on him right now. You know, you see Mark really having to work to get by the seven car, and people say, why don't he just move over and let him go? Well, the reason he don't, nobody wants to get a lap down first off. But uh, you've got to give it 100% no matter what. If you're locked down, that don't mean you're out of the race yet. Just means it's a lot tougher to win it from a lap down. Trouble, turn four. A lot of smoke. see what started, but he did speed up here. Man, that's terrible. You know he's leading in the point standing, and this is really going to be a setback in your program to lead the national point standing. He's not leading them anymore. The Interstate Battery Chevrolet, Joe Gibbs, the owner, and Alan Kowicki made up his lap on the race back to the flag. He beat Mark Martin with a caution flag, and Alan is back on the lead lap. But for the point leader, Dale Jarrett, the day may be over. The left front of that car took a hard shot into the wall, and it looks from this angle, hard to tell, but what the rear end might be pushed over to the right. Yeah, same thing right there. It's just about the same place Davey Allison was leading in the points at the end of the season. And almost the same set of circumstances right against that wall. There's no such thing as hitting the wall easy on major speedway. I don't care where you hit it. It'll usually knock the car out of the race. 
buddy as you said if something happens up in turn four that front straightaway is all too narrow we are under caution 110 laps complete second caution flag of the day for Dale Jarrett's crash down the front straightaway we'll be right back Dale Jarrett's car is being removed by the record here at Atlanta Motor Speedway and this is the first lap of Winston Cup competition all year that Jarrett has not completed. He's sitting in the car and he's okay. Usually when the driver stays in there like that, he's just wanting to get that car back over there, let him see if they can get it straightened out well enough that he can get back in the race for the points. I'll tell you, he's probably pretty antsy right now. He's wanting to get that car on in the garage and let him work on it some. Cars that are more than one lap down are, make, are pitting now. Let's have another look and see what happened coming out of turn number four. Professor Baker. Well, let's see. When I see him, that, that looks like smoke already, so it's hard to tell. He's backward definitely up in the wall there. I see Harry Gant down below him there. And look at Kolwicki on the right side of the screen coming. Woo! He wanted that lap back. He did what he had to do, though. That was a circumstance where Mark couldn't gamble, but Quickie could. Different angle. This yeah. was after he turned it around. It looked like he just looped the car coming up off the corner. Thing got out from under him a little bit, which is not hard to do up off that corner. Back down the wall. Luckily, when he crossed the traffic here, no one was coming. Man, that's a bad thing. When you're going across there, you don't know how hard you're going to hit, but you know it's going to be hard with that driver's side. Right, right back side. to in here. Like Buddy said, you just don't hit easy on these big racetracks. Everybody said, boy, it don't look like you hit hard, but they need to be sitting in that thing. It's a pretty good joke. Saw those wheels locked up. Danny from Kentucky called in and said, why do all these wheels have black rims? Well, they don't. It's up to the teams what color to paint them. They used to chrome them, but you can't anymore. You're not allowed to. Well, you couldn't keep weights on them. You'd put right. weights on them, and when you got over 170 miles an hour, it throw them through the top of the fender and all. And in the grandstands. Yeah. yeah. People Neil, dodge your bullets. <laughs> Danny from Fort Hood, Texas, is going to that race tomorrow. He wants to know where you qualified for Dale's car. Qualified fifth, I think. I should have ran a little bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> We're under caution. Second one of the day. from New Jersey. When was the last dirt race in Winston Cup racing? Rick Fielden tells us Raleigh, North Carolina, 1970. Richard Petty won it in a Plymouth owned by Don Robertson. Not a Petty Enterprises car. Harry Gant back on pit road. They all attend to that carburetor. Jack Roush, who owns Mark Martin's car. We'll be right back. We're back at Atlanta. Harry Gant made an extended pit stop. Didn't beat the pace car down pit road. Tough day for Gant. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett on pit road. Well, Mike, to update on what happened on the pit stops there among the leaders, uh, Rusty Wallace's car was getting pretty tight. Uh, green racetrack, tires biting too good. Car just wouldn't turn in the corner. They made an adjustment, took some wedge out. On the other hand, leader Mark Martin's crew still trying to tighten his car up, still a little bit loose. Jeff Gordon, on the other hand, who's running second right now, had uh, just a four tire change he's perfect now let's go to randy perman well guys i'm going to give dale jarrett a break he's uh huffing and puffing a little bit down here the crew is frantically working on this car buddy and neil you guys talked about the points that are so important here they're stretching out the left front and also the left rear they brought some trailing arms in that's a big process to change those he'll be back out but it's going to be a long stay back here in the garage area. Have the flu and crash in the same day is not a lot of fun. Harry Gant pitted a lap too early. He pitted with the lead lap cars. He was one lap down, so he has to start at the tail end of the longest line. But no, Gant is coming back in. Repeat that carburetor, or re finish that carburetor repair. He beats the pace car down pit road. And we're set to go back to green at lap 115. Mark Martin leads them down for the start. That's Derek Cole on the side. Is fifth, Kenny Schrader sixth. Oh, look at oh. Gordon went up there. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> Gordon was going around the outside and uh looked like the coke car slid up and back carried him in the wall. I couldn't believe that. He moved out of here. Over. <laughs> Derek, Derek wasn't even close to you. Tense moment there. Martin kept his right back up on the second place here. Because Gordon driving deep down in the corner of the outside. You can 
Middle of the floor there. Look at Homer on the outside line. And Gant is away. He has lost, I believe, two laps. Rick Mast is back in the race after 39 minutes behind the wall. job of holding Rusty off once he got under him when he had to go up high to board that car while ago. They have cleared the lap cars. Two of them separate those front three. All three are in the top well, I tell you, Jeff just moved right on by Rusty and now he's up in the line where he wants to be. He seems to have a place up there that car really works well. Looking through Rusty's car, we see the 24 car we see the leader right out in front of him, so he's not so far away, but they can't reel him in. 24 car might have the ability to do that. You know, Neil, we're looking at this guy running this long, but I don't think the average person realizes this guy is a rookie in this division. He's up here contending for the man in Atlanta. I mean, he's doing things that's never been done before. Yeah, but I think he's technically a rookie. I don't really consider him. I mean, you almost overlooked that. Well, at least he can have his own rental car. He had to override out here and didn't get a rental car from the airport. And couldn't, couldn't drink the champagne in victory lane. Now he can. Fourth place is the battle. Ricky Rudd and Morgan Shepard, then the lap car, Jimmy Spencer, and then the right behind that. Also, Ernie Irvin coming up on Kenny Schrader. There's Schrader, top of the racetrack, the white car, and Ernie Irvin. And uh, Kodak Yellow right behind. Spencer comes up in front of Schrader. That'll give Irvin a little, little edge. Well, Spencer comes right back down. <laughs> and gives Irvin just a little bit of measure. There goes Kenny on the outside on the top of there. Now they'll both move up and try to get another 12 car. There's Rudd and Shepard once again. This is the fourth place. Fifth. Here's six, seven, and eight. That Jeff Bodine to that point. It's a bit ago. And here we got Chevy, Chevy, Ford, and Ford. There are also Pontiacs in this race. One Olds will be on no Buicks. And Chrysler Corporation. A lot of folks want to know what Chrysler is coming back. They've got their new LH sedans and their real team. They're going to replace the Chrysler LeBaron and Dodge Daytona. And it will be the right size for NASCAR racing. It comes to the streets in 1994. Into the racetrack. Well, I've on that. I tell you, Chrysler is pretty serious about the racing. Two Chevrolets right now battling for sixth place. Bernie Irvin underneath Kenny Schrader. We've seen this time and time again. That guy on the top of the back. Trouble front straightaway. It is Joe Rutland. Got a little fire in it. Looks like fire out the exhaust pipes right now. That's coming out the tailpipes where it had dumped all that fuel. He cranked it. He just re-cranked it and put the fire out. That was actually the fire we were seeing was coming out the exhaust pipe for all fuel. Joe Rutland making his 17th start at Atlanta, or at Atlanta. The front end is all bent on that car, but he will try to drive it around to pit road, or at least behind the wall. No, nope, it won't steer. Yeah, he's torn up his bed, sitting down completely down the chassis. He also can't steer. Tell Dick Moroso that he looks okay. He's got a little damage on the front door. Dick was watching this today and he wanted to make sure he had the right channel and all, so I gave him the right message in the pit. Third caution of the day comes out of lap 123 for Joe Rutman. Mark Martin behind the pace car. Let's have a look at the way they're running as we go to caution. Ford, Chevy, Pontiac, Ford, Chevrolet. Five. Two Chevys, a Ford, a Chevy, and a Pontiac to fill out the top ten. Kyle Petty's moved up a little bit. Yes, he has. He's correct and makes some good adjustments on that car. Last time a Pontiac won this race was forever ago. I'll get it for you here in a minute. 1961, Bob Burdick was the last Pontiac win. You know what's really nice is this one car in each accident. Usually on the front straightaway here, you have multi-car pilots, so everybody's doing a real good job of missing things today. Pit stops, leaders coming in, and not all of them will. Mark Martin stays out, Jeff Gordon, Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, Kenny Schrader, Morgan Shepard all stay out on the racetrack. Bernhardt, Kulwicki, Elliott, 
and Terry Labonte and Kyle Petty are pitting. Right rear adjustment. Keeps those guys pretty busy when you just got a certain number can go along. You got one guy carrying a tire and making chance adjustments at the same time. Getting four. It's 14 car Terry Labonte. Three car runner, I believe. There's Elliott. He's through. He's going back out. I think Elliott's running better than when he won here last year, so don't count him out. I tell you, that car is right up in there. Caution is out here at lap 124. Mark Martin into the field. Trying to be the second driver in a row to carry an in car camp to victory lane on TNN. Back to green here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Hunt Strickland makes a late pit stop. Joe Rutland, you see, has climbed out of the Funalu machine. And let's have a look and see the aftermath of what happened here. Got it sideways, evidently got that outside wall, similar to what we saw earlier. Here we go, all the way down across track. Like Buddy said, you're lucky when you if you clog that front straightaway, it's just hard not to get hit down through there. And they went to the outside of him. And a lot of unburnt gas got down in those header pipes. And that was the bit of flame that you see there that when he fired the motor up, that all extinguished. Yeah, these things have four inch tailpipes on each side and it sloshes over like that when you hit the wall, just sloshes out the carburetor. It causes a fire internally in the tailpipes. And we saw him recrank and actually blow the fire out. Getting ready to go back to green. Five different leaders in this race have changed the back and forth eight times. Three cautions for 12 laps. 14 cars still on the lead lap. Mark Martin, the leader. Jeff Gordon in second. Rusty Wallace in third. Morgan Shepard is fourth. Fifth is Ricky Rudd. Sixth, Kenny Schrader. Seventh, Ernie Irvin. Eighth, Jeff Bodine. Ninth is Brett Bodine. Tenth is Alan Kowicki. Eleventh, Dale Earnhardt. Twelfth, Kyle Petty. Thirteenth is Bill Elliott. And fourteenth, Terry Labonte. One lap down. Alongside the leader, Derek Cole. Spencer. Jeff Gordon just didn't get up to speed as quickly because Coke car was able to keep up on the, on the get go there, but uh, now he's got to try that same maneuver. To go right and he's probably doing it earlier. Going the same way on the high side. Well, one thing about it, it's hard to block him because he uses it well at that high. <laughs> Some of the nicest people in racing. 
Wish it the best. Bernhardt under Brett Bodine there, but couldn't quite make it go up. Trying to get eighth place. Boy, that move that was so quick you out here. He got that lap back on though, and he's just getting right in the head. That's been a lucky job for the week so far. To the gas wall. Got, there goes the oh, run. All right, baby. Yeah. Well, we don't have to analyze that one. That was pretty obvious. Well, they want for oncoming traffic. Oh, that's what I was worried about to come some cars. Victory. But everybody else will slow down and get through to a stop. The Wiki is still moving. The back end of his car is badly caved in, but it is still moving. But it's just moving to the garage. Jay Pitts in. And I had to do some work on it. Yep. Here comes the leaders around and facing the field is Dick Trickle. As they come by, now everybody's out of the throttle. Derek Cope tried to get a lap back. I don't believe he made it. That was what we almost didn't need this to replay on. We saw him get in the throttle to try to go by it. Of course, they the track. They got together. Well, once they touch, a lot of people don't understand on major speedways, and it's just casual contact. That upsets the air on these cars. And that thing, he actually started wrecking the minute they touched. It just took a little while for you to be able to see it. He was in trouble the minute they touched. And Trickle was about three wide back there. As they tried to avoid Kluwicki, he just had no place to go. You know, we was talking a while ago. I don't think I'm going to do any specials on a tough part of a racetrack. This see the, the front straightaway here. See the bump on the back of Trickle's car? Uh, I believe Wally Dollenbach and Trickle got together as they tried to avoid it. Let's look at again and see what happened. We saw Kowicki right here on the bottom. Watch him make this big run. He gets in the throttle. The car touched just a little bit. And the back end starts around. The only thing he can do now is turn the car to the right a little bit to correct it. But he can't because the 15 sitting there. So all he can do is hold it down, turn it around. Like Buddy said, the car was wrecked 100 yards back up the racetrack. It just took a while for it to come on around. It was over now, it would have been fine. But here comes the 75 car, nowhere to go. Like you said, he's Ooh, already out of control. Man, that's a hard lick. Here it is again from another angle. Well, you see him right here. The car gets a little loose there, and they just touch right there. Well, he's in trouble there. You can see the car. It's already turned around. He's along for the ride now. The steering wheel, something to hold on to. Let's see if we can see what happens behind him as Boy. Kyle Petty gets past and Davey Allison. Yeah, Davey Allison. Well, here comes the rest of that pack. Oh, yeah. Trickle. Oh, yeah, they hit way yeah. back up here. Trickle, Trickle had nothing to do with that wreck. He just went victim. He got turned around on the front end of Wally Donovan's car. But everybody else back there checked up and did not make it worse than it was. Here comes Jeff Martin. And he doesn't quite beat Mark Martin out of the race. Of course, they've got Kowicki's car down there at the end of pit road as well. Very close to where his pit is, but I don't think he can get back to it. His crew is right there, only about 50 feet from the car, but they can't much go to it because that's past the end of, end of the pits. There's one of the toughest, hardest racing guys you'll ever meet, Dick Trickle. He'll be looking for somewhere to race tonight. He races all the time. Probably so. And there's Allen. Oh, tough day. I'll tell you, win the championship last year, and it hadn't been that great this year for him. And there's uh, Kowicki talking with his crew, having a seat on the pit wall. He's okay. Let's have another look at it from another angle. Top of the screen. We'll see Kowicki sideways up in the middle of the track. He's going to back it up to the top. We see some of the other cars come under. There's Davey Allison coming through. Look way to the right. There's Dollenbach into, into Dick Trickle. Got Trickle turned sideways. Situation where Trickle lifted. He saw the wreck. Dollenbach was right behind him. Couldn't help it. Got up on the back of him. Mm. Look coming down Pitt Road. Somebody turned down Pitt Road to yep. avoid the accident. And you know, folks, you see where Wally Dollenbach was. You see that on the highway, too. You're up behind somebody, and sometimes you're close behind somebody. You don't see what's going on in front of them. That's one of the dangers of following too closely. Here you have to do it because you have to draft. But tough thing out on the highway. Paul Andrews, Alan Wicky's crew chief, talking with his driver and car owner. And Kyle Petty will lead a lap here after starting way deep in the field. You think points don't mean a lot? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure they would like to put tires on that thing, but here's the opportunity to lead. If during the course of the season, this might be a big factor in where he finishes. Sitting on pit road with the hood up is Terry Labonte. 
He is one of the cars that was on the lead lap to Kellogg's car with Billy Hagan. He has lost a lap on the road as they continue to work underneath the hood. It's hard to tell this angle what they're doing. They had a good run early, he's really going here. I see a, it's either a hose or an air wrench going around to that side of the car. It's hard to tell what. Put, put water in it. Overheating. We're 136 laps into this race. Alan Kowicki is okay, but apparently he is out of it for this afternoon. We'll be right back. Parking lot's full, and so is the grandstand here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. And that shot from the Family Channel blimp, 132 feet long. Holds up to four people, including uh, their pilot, Alan Burroughs, and our TNN cameras. So thanks to the Family Channel for bringing that along. You get these pictures today. Glenn Jarrett, a moment ago, caught up with Alan Kowicki. Here's what Alan told our pit road reporter. A very disheartened Alan Kowicki is walking away from his car. He climbed out under his own power. Alan, tough break out there. What exactly happened? I'm not really sure. Um, Bernhardt and I rubbed on the front straightaway. I don't know if I cut a tire down or what. It just, I don't know. The thing just got loose and got away from me. I, I don't know. Well, you got a really good break there. You made a great move to get that lap back and then had something like this to happen. But you're okay? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The car's pretty bad, unfortunately. I hope nobody got hurt there. Somebody ran in the back of me awful hard. And I just hope everybody's okay. Well, we appreciate you taking time. Better luck next time. Well, as we passed along earlier, and as, and as Glenn informed Alan, Dick Trickle, the other driver involved, was okay. And Alan was talking there about something that happened the lap before he and Jeff Bodine got together down there in turn three. And whether that was a contributor to the accident, we're not sure. Terry Labonte's car is backing up to the garage. Tough break for the former Winston Cup champ. He had a good run. We saw him pumping water in the car, trying to get it down. Best thing to do, take it in and work on it. Here are two of the three rookies in this race. In fact, here's all three of them. A lap down, Kenny Wallace and Bobby Labonte, and there's Jeff Gordon, who is up there in second place right now. We haven't been able to see that anybody keep up with a six car on the start. See if Gordon can get a better start here. We've got Kyle Petty leading, but he's a little bit over the tires. So six car and a 24 should be able to work on it pretty quick. Fresh tires on the other leaders really show up. Of course, now, with the new tires, it comes out quickly. That's true. It's real well for him. Let me tell you, you need new tires here. That really hurts you on old tires. You can see him just dropping back. Irvin, way up high. Can't get past, can't clear Derek Cole. A little bit earlier, this almost caught down down. So he's pushing in the corner. Here's your Hardy's update. Where all the drivers were running during that caution period about five laps ago. Now here's a 24 car. He's, he's sitting up on the edge of that seat. This is the best boost on his head. This is the best car to get up on the lead. As Gordon's able to stay with him a lot better than anyone we've seen all day. Since they've got the, boy, look like the six car got a little loose up on Gordon. <laughs> Get close enough. We've already heard Mark say, he put no lead on him. He might get the lead this race. I don't think that that line Jeff Gordon just took is in Professor Baker's school book for uh, here at Atlanta. It might, be, it might be added in there, though. I tell you, we're just keep really getting that thing around. The cards out there now. We want to the most because there's no way this deal. Let's see. He is, oh, the car gets a push on it to wiggle around. He wanted to lead that race. He drove it in so hard. He took advantage. But he's not through yet. I'm not sure that he won't be able to come on back up there with him. She wants to get through the 24 car. Right here, you just saved the kid. Everybody knows who you're talking about. Might have stuck on the racer. <laughs> you bet. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Dick Trickle has just stepped out of the Imperial Care Center. Dick, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, I hurt my feelings about all. You know, I feel bad for the Carolina Pottery people and all the people I worked on the car with Raymonds. 
you know, we just got the car working over that last yellow, and I, I, I just radio in and I said, hey, we could do some racing now. And we only made a few laps. We got collected up in the wreck. You know, I was going to miss the wreck, but I got hit from behind. That's racing. It happens quite often. Yeah, he's definitely disappointed, folks. And that set of dishes is now a do-it-yourself kit. The one from Rusty Wallace is called the black car. They got a big piece of paper stuck in the grill. We've seen a couple cars overheat here. Yeah, a lot of these, the noses on these cars, in anticipation of cold weather, were taped up pretty well. A lot of that tape came off in the first pit stop, but not all that grill work is completely open to allow an unobstructed flow of air. Piece of paper like that. Ricky Rudd in the Tide car battling Sitko's running back for seven points. And Morgan is staying right in the second. As we go back and forth, back and forth, the Sitko car is right in and every time we turn around, so they're going to be someone to deal with for the days over. Has just taken the lead in number of laps led. 67 to 65 for Rusty Wallace. Driver who leads the most lap gets five more points added on. And those are two drivers that will be in the chase for this championship. Neil, did you win in the uh, Wood Brothers car here? Yes, I did too. I, I just wanted to say, that's probably the best driving car as far as the most people I have set down to in here at this racetrack. That thing just goes anywhere you want it to go. I tell you what I always like about it. When you get these big race tracks, you mash that gas pedal, it nail you back in that seat pretty good, too. I think that's a lot of motor. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the Wood Brothers car. Right here in Shepard, number 20. Right there. Ricky Rudd. Right with him. Up the down. Fifth, sixth, and seventh. Two of Morgan Shepard's three victories in this car race. Neil won the last race here for the Wood Brothers in 1985. Their last race was Dale Jarrett at Michigan. Yep. Seems like that team does so well on the intermediate track. Charlotte, Michigan. Today went along. We, you know, he's never really been right at the very front, but right now he's been right. I'd say it's the best race that he's had this year. Kenny Bernstein, Breaker State team. Well, he sat on the pole here last year, and you know, he led the race a long time. I think you have tracks that you really like. about how this race is progressing. Toll free, you can call in at 1-800-451-7331. Questions will be faxed up to our broadcast booth and we'll try to answer as many of them as I can. 1-800-451-7331, our toll free number to help you become part of the telecast today. Never see Kenny Schrader right there. The end of that field. He was up in front of this group. That last caution looked like he might have got a little bit behind. Kenny's up there. Now he won't hesitate to jump up and try the top line. 
certificate by these guys. You get a little log jam like this, and stuff gets back up. We've had several questions about why they call this Scott Car Racing. The GM cars, the Pontiacs, and the Chevys, you go into the showroom, you actually drive the front wheels here, drives the back wheels. A lot of these cars have four chassis. Not a whole lot of stock left in stock car racing. Well, this, I'll tell you what, the bodies on the cars now are closer to the manufacturers than they've ever been. These new templates we have. And you still, in this type of racing, you have the Ford motors and the Fords and the Chevrolets and the Chevrolets. So the identity there is the, the brand of the, the body design and the motor, the power form. And that's basically where it comes from. So David from Kansas, who called that in, we call it stock appearing car racing. Well, actually, when this series started, they did run stock cars. That's what they run. Nobody, uh, motors, you, know, you name it. Now it's become a very special race car. And they still use the name. Still, you see your favorite driver win in a Ford, and you drive a Ford. We well, that's why these grandstands are full. Yeah, they said, boy, we won this week. Yep. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Oh, no, thank you. We got to clear that old bus, and we got to boy that was built so fast, we couldn't leave them to stop. I'll tell you what, you're talking about that. We're on 180 here now. And I remember when we had a $10,000 prize for the first guy that would run 180. <laughs> Here's two of those Fords battling right now. Morgan Shepard has taken fifth place away from Brett Bodine. Brett slips back one notch to six, but nonetheless, he's having a good run here today. Let's check in with his pit. Here's Randy. Johnny Richardson, you guys have had some disappointment this season, but you got a nice solid run going here today. Yeah, we have. We've had a few great motor failures this year, and uh, kind of got us behind in the points. And yesterday we had a, a, a water leak in the motor, if you can believe it, and didn't get any practice. So we've had to adjust all day and to get the car running, but we finally got it working pretty good and starting to pay off. What else can you do to make it better? I don't know. It, it, right now it's kind of coming and going. It, it starts off a little tight, you know, end up actually freeing up and getting a little loose by the end of the run. So uh, we're kind of caught between the rock and the hard spot, but we'll come up with something. Big battle here. Big pack of cars are showing. Oh, Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy, you're in. Oh, you talk about cover. There is not another man in this world that can drive a car that far sideways and save it. Nobody in America would like to be in there with him. No. <laughs> That's the truth. You think he's breathing yet? I don't know. Now you see why the years he won the national championship up there, why they call him Mr. Exxon. Yeah, he got so loose. Look like he's either got tires up and so loose. The minute the 83 car got 90 dollars, turned it around again. It's about time, it's about time to regroup. I, <laughs> I got to see that again because I still don't believe he's safe.
Oh, this, I'll tell you what, the speed we run at this racetrack now, these guys are cranking these motors pretty tough. The truck driver, he wants to get in and load the truck as quick as possible to beat this traffic jam on the way out. Twice a winner here. Uh oh, Kenny Schrader running in ninth place. And that smoke's coming out from under the center of the car, and he's being black flag. Yeah, it looks like it's coming out right on the edge of the hole. Straight shot from the front. I can almost see oil dropping down off the oil pan, hitting the handles. I'm not so sure you had to crank an oil pan or something like that. Now, how could I make that call, seeing an oil pan on this car? I'm getting pretty bored of your eyes. I'm getting pretty bored of your eyes. It's not like the oil pan in your stock automobile. It's just a pan under the crankshaft. It's, it's a dry sump pump that sends it to a tank located further back in the car, but something is amiss. What are you going to do if I'm right? On that guess. Well, let's find out from Glenn. Well, Mike, Ken Schrader has brought it in. Ken just pounded the steering wheel in uh, frustration. A lot of smoke coming from under the hood. As you can see, they're just about to lift and have a little trouble with the hood pins. It is definitely an oil leak. It looks to be on the right side of the engine. The engine is still running on the car, but uh, they still haven't located the oil leak. They can't see it coming out from underneath the right side, but uh, they're going to have to do a little digging, a little searching to find out exactly what it is. Again, Schrader in total frustration, sitting there grimacing, just uh, not happy about this at all. He was running pretty well. We'll see if we can find out exactly what it is and update it when we do. Well, I'm telling what Neil said. He seen the oil pan, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back up front. Mark Martin has led most of this race. He's led the most laps. And explain the bonus point situation. When you lead a lap in a Winston Cup race, you get five bonus points. If you take the lead again later, you don't get five more. Everybody who leads at least a lap gets five points, and then the driver who leads the most laps gets five bonus points. Kenny Schrader is behind the wheel. Yeah, they have to get it back there, get it up on jack stands and try to repair it. One reason Schrader was so upset is he just passed those six or eight cars we saw behind yes. over He was really on the move. transmission to start with and uh, then the motor broke uh, broke the camshaft and the motor car was real good uh, you know we're running good just uh, lost that gearbox and that really hurt us because it caused us to, it was up under green it caused us to go a lap down and then the motor broke right there I don't know some camshaft broke for some odd reason what about the competition out there see anybody that can touch Mark or Gordon up front well I run behind them there for a little while and Mark looks awful strong Looks like Rusty's pretty good for a little while, but he fades. And uh, Mark looks like he's got it under control to me. Darrell Walter has only had one finish in the top 15 this season. It's been a tough start for Darrell's team. Here is Glenn Jarrett. Well, Ken Schrader is sitting in the car. Ken doesn't know exactly what it is yet. They said something like metal cover stud, you know, a little two inch long, four inch stud. I guess broke up. Got a lot of little rock. But he's having fun. Looked like the car was really working pretty well. Finally, it really got it worked out. Yeah, uh, we wouldn't be real good or new tires after about 20 laps. It just kept looking better. But well, he's getting ready to uh, try to get back out there. You can hear the frustration in his voice, though. They, these guys work real hard at this racetrack to get this, these cars dialed in about midway during the race, and then something like this happens. Tough break for Ken Schrader. You know, these, this racing engine was designed in 1955, and since that time, Hot riders, drag racers, and oval racers have complained about the sealing of the valve cover. It does not provide a positive seal or cylinder. I think that would have to be called by Neil because I tell you the honest truth, when it runs out, it runs out of the valve cover. Yeah, it was right down the side of the motor. I just made a slight this call. <laughs> Top of the motor, bottom of the motor. Mark Martin leads Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Morgan Shepard, and Ernie Irvin. 174 laps complete in the Motorcraft 500. We're just past halfway. 
Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. TNN delighted to be able to be here to bring you live Saturday coverage of this race snowed out from six days ago. Mark Martin, the race leader, Rusty Wallace in second place. There you see them. And Rusty Wallace is closing back in. Here's Randy. Guys, you talk about trading secrets in this sport, and they try not to let it happen. But here's one for the books. These teams and drivers now have motorhomes. Well, last night, Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace had their motorhome parked right next to each other here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. They were seen in heavy discussion about chassis setups, all kinds of springs and sway bars, all the way down to air pressures. Now, who gave who what, we don't know, but they definitely figured something out right now. Two drivers from out of the Midwest, from out of the ASA circuit. It's been surprising over the last five or six years how many drivers have come out of that circuit and had a great deal of success in Western Cup racing. And there are two of them at the head of the field. You know, he's closed that interview down and we're talking about working on the chassis. One thing to do is work on the steering wheel. Rusty is really getting his car around the racetrack. He sees Mark up there. He's able to gain a little bit now. So now he's starting really pinching the car down, working the throttle hard. He was sitting back there right, and once he sees there's a chance to come up, then he's going to set up an agent. He's really work hard to close in. You can bet Rusty's getting all he get out of that right now. He's pretty relaxed for averaging 175 miles an hour around here. Back at sixth place.
think it's I think it's twofold. One, you carry that in-car camera. It's good exposure for you and for your sponsor. Same thing with answering questions after a race. And more importantly, helps you fans to better understand this sport because very few folks sitting at home watching this race have really They have, but they got a few tickets. Yeah. Let's uh, let's go down to Glenn Jarrett. Well, Mike, uh, I'm in Bobby Lavani's group. This is Bill Davis, who owns uh, Bobby's Master High School. Owning a race car is not always what he's cracked up to be. Bill takes an active part in the team. He serves as a jack man. If you hear the second caution flag when the guys came in, as soon as he Bobby joins it with a big knocker. I'm not going to touch it. And Bill said if I did, he hit me. But uh, you got hit in the head. How did that happen? I didn't hear you. It's sure hard to get on TV in this garage. You have to get the <laughs> Um... Routine stop and Elton came around with the tires and bumped me in the head. It's okay, it doesn't hurt. You had to go to the hospital to get a little work done, but. Uh, oh, yeah, they just take it up. You're okay to go back to duty now? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, but did, sometimes do you feel like that uh, somebody might do that on purpose? Yeah, I do. I really think you did. We're going to talk about that for a Okay, Bill Davis, back to you. You can't hurt a car owner hitting him in the head. <laughs> no, you got to hit him in the wallet. <laughs> a little duct tape will be good as new. And one of the nicest guys in this sport. Bill, Bill and Gail Davis will take a very active role in running that race team. Driver, freshman, Bobby Labonte, former dish champion. Harry Gant, has been some time behind the ball. He is a rather unhit road today. He is about to go five laps. Yeah, he's got so many problems. He did not even contest it. He comes up, he just gets out of the way. Oh, good question. Is Bobby Hamilton? former rookie of the year and driving the country time car related to Pete Hamilton who won the 70 day 2500. Hardy's update after 180 laps. While they look this up they will mention too that the 18 car is back on the racetrack. He's they will just take that on the racetrack trying to get those points. He is 76 laps behind. Jeff Gordon's pit. Mike, this is Ray Evernham, Jeff Gordon's crew chief. And Ray, Jeff looks like after a long green flag run, the racetrack really comes to him. Yeah, our car set up uh, on low fuel and old tires, and we hope that the race stays green. And our guys in the pits are doing a heck of a job keeping them in a position. So there's a lot of people from DuPont here. We just want to get a good finish. Well, you know, earlier on there was some talk about maybe holding Jeff back and letting him get a little experience. But he loves this place, and he's just giving him free reign today. There's no such thing as holding Jeff Gordon back. He's pretty wide open all the time, but he drives with a lot of smart and a lot of experience. He's doing a real good job. Mike Joy, Glenn, we got a call from Virginia. Sammy in Virginia Beach wants me to tell us how much it costs to put that intricate paint job on that car. Right, we got a call in on our, our 900 number, right? A fan wants 
curious to know how much does it cost for that paint job on that race car? I guess you'd have to ask the people from DuPont uh, about that, but it, it takes one man in a straight for about eight hours to put it on. I don't know what the cost is, but it takes a lot of man hours. I bet he knows. He just doesn't want to tell us. Folks, let me tell you, when you got a man who works on these cars for eight hours, you're going to talk about a week's work. specialists or whatever they do, fabricators, welders or whatever, and these guys that paint these things, they're masterpieces when they come to, it's a shame sometimes to bring them to the track and look as nice as they do, and some old green driver looks up down the side of them, you know, careful. Look up down the side of this one, he's going pretty quick. There are five different day glow colors on that car. Boy, look at Bob Martin's car. He's going fast, but he's used up some racetrack. And here's the race for the Rusty Wallace. Dale Earnhardt is on pit row at 100 green. Walker was pretty observant right there when he said it looked like the two car faded a little bit. You see left side of the screen, it was still working on Kenny Schrader. They're not doing any chassis stuff as I can see the car. So we, had a, we had a call in, you'll see the big gas can being held up by Danny Myers. The little orange can is an overflow can. When gas starts to come out of that, the tank is full. It was one of our 800 number questions. And now race leader Mark Martin will surrender the lead to Jeff Gordon as he comes down the pit lane. And Rusty Wallace is coming right in with him. Green flag stops at lap 195. I got a feeling that they need tires worse than they need fuel right now. I, I think they're going back when the times really drop off, they go in the pit. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. Martin has brought the Valvoline Ford in. I asked car owner Jack Rest before he brought it in if they needed the chassis adjustment this time. He said, no, the chassis is good. We just need tight. But exactly right. Four tire change, fuel, and he'll be down and away very shortly. Good pit stop for leader Mark Martin. Martin away, Rusty Wallace away as well. Derek Cope is on pit road. Line coming in this lap. So the flag stops continue. Jeff Gordon. In front. And he will pit this time after leaving a lap here. Morgan Shepard goes past into the lead. For the Woodrunners. Now we just saw Brian Hamill we was talking to him about how good that pit crew has been doing. And I'm telling you, they've been matching Rusty Wallace stop for stop. And Rusty's team has been as good as anyone on the circuit this season. So this pit crew, if they can get him in and out, he'll be right back if they win. Well, let's put some pressure on these young guys. Here's Glenn. Well, Jeff Gordon brings the DuPont Chevrolet in with that fancy paint job. Again, we're not expecting the chassis adjustment here because as Ray said, they set this car up to run when it's just about ready for a pit stop. More tires and low fuel. The right side tires are off. We're over to the left side now. The left side tires on a good pit stop for this young Relatively inexperienced crew. He's down and away. Boy, that's a good stop. 20.4 seconds for four tires and fuel under green. Strickland is in the pit lane. Ricky Lundin just made his stop. Big speed coming to pit road. First time that Morgan Shepard has led a Winston Cup race since Dover Downs last May. Close down another circle with Jimmy Horton and Ted Musgrave making stops this time around. This will jumble the field. Ernie Irvin has the second place car and Bill Elliott. Champion of this race moves up to third on the board. I tell you what, you get into a situation like this, here's the 21 staying out. If a car should come out here, there's other guys that land down. Right. In the middle, kind of in the danger zone, in the middle of green flag pit stops. We'll sort out the field when we come back. 199 laps completed in Atlanta, Georgia. You're riding with Mark Martin, who is once again the race leader in the Motorcraft 500. Jack Roush, Valvoline Ford. Rookies Kenny Wallace and Bobby Labonte did it this time around. Gary Gann is on the road for four tires. Green flag stops continue. And Bill Elliott did make a pit stop. I believe he led a lead. He was in second place at that time. And Mark Martin was back. Bill Elliott still on the lead lap here. Mike, they're reporting a light sprinkler rain up at turn three and four, so this might change some strategy stuff. What's going on? A little bit of rain up there. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be any heavy cloud. Any moisture in this race track is a bunch. Please don't snow. Oh, don't snow again. I'm going to get a. 
Hopslow brothers, the Bodines. Jeff in the 15 car and Brett in 26. And they should be about 11 on top position. Let's check it out. Jeff is now posted seventh. so good earlier, it's hard to see how you can get it, but it just came into the right time. Ray from Texas wants to know what NASCAR stands for. We never explain that. National Association for Sky Power Auto Racing. Hall of Fame mechanic Ray Vogt came up with that acronym when NASCAR was founded in 1949. Bill Elliott is still uh, running on the lead lap here, having just made a pit stop. He is the ninth place car. A lot of concern about his car over Jimmy Johnson. A little adjustment, a little bit of surgery in the new car. The sun that's getting up in from the Well, I checked with uh, Junior Shorty Edwards uh, about Junior's condition, and he said that Junior was at home resting for a bit, watching the race on CNN today, and that he wouldn't be at Darlington next week. So all you fans have been wondering about him, Junior will make his appearance next week. And we'll vote about it. He wouldn't miss him. Junior and hurry back. Bill Elliott is ninth. Junior's other car, driven by Hutt Strickland, is three laps down presently in 22nd position. Here's a look at Bill Elliott. I tell you, Bill trouble all since that motor was, and it just wanted to get a good, solid racing. I know he'd like to be able to thing, but he just needs to get this thing under their belt and get back there, get their feet on the ground again. Defending champion of this race. Let's go back up front where leader Mark Martin is in race traffic. We see him trailing Michael Waltrip in the Pennzoil car, Bobby Labonte in the Maxwell House Ford, and Kyle Petty, who is right now the last car on the lead lap. Be they're pretty impressive. Around the outside of one, down the inside of the other, like they're part. Mark Mark running, he's going to put it in the 208 laps complete. 328 make up the distance. The cars in the lead lap, Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Morgan Shepard, Ricky Rice, Bernie Irvin, Jeff Bodine, Bill Elliott, and Dale Earnhardt. There's Earnhardt just ahead of the leader. Look how fast Mark's car is getting through the corner from the middle out, like Freddie said over and over. I'm telling you, that thing is running. Bill Elliott just in front of him. Boy, the six is going to fix to get a windshield full of it. He'll be right on around him. He'll be chasing him. Eight cars in the lead line. He did four cars. He's going to run even with the three cars. About halfway through the lead, it looks like he hit the afterburner right here. Why don't you just pull away right here? Man, that's fun when you got a race car drive that way. Yeah, the banks are throwing like that. They got a little jump in them. Big race track like this. Really good feeling. Seven cars are now on the lead lap. Only six cars are out of this race. Bob Schacht was out early. Here are the drivers who have led this race so far. Jeff Gordon had a tense moment a lap ago. I was watching as he went 
then a third, fourth turn. And the car just slid right up against the wall. He almost knocked the wall down. He got completely out of the black area he's in right there. He was right up in the gray. Just didn't pick up the signal car. Gordon Shepard will him in now. Gordon had trouble in that one. He just put it on the wall. I don't know if he's going to go over the cautious now. He's going to gain What do you think about it? Well, what it looked like to me is he's just trying so hard to catch Rusty Wallace that he's he just gone wrong. He's going to do everything he can to go up to the front. Second is going to be the battle for the lead with Mark Martin going in like this. Boy, I'll tell you, that's something. Here we go. Going inside with him and see if we can tell anything that's going on. 
to think what we're going to see is a big left-handed turn right here into the garage. Oh boy. No reason to look. She is expired. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, on days when they're running like that, they'll, they'll blow up, and when you can't run a lick, they'll run for two weeks. <laughs> now this battle we were talking about before is the battle for the lead. Don't they run fastest just before they run? reach for the can of spray paint after all because the black car one of them is back out front Rusty Wallace is leading Morgan Shepard Jeff Gordon Ricky Rudd and Ernie Irvin there's Randy Pepper in the garage Mark Martin what a cruel sport you definitely have them covered today yeah that's the way it goes uh, maybe we're back in one of these things next week or something I don't know we're going to Darlington uh, something broke in the in the bottom end of the motor there's not anything you can really do about it uh, happens to everybody throughout the year. Uh, some teams more than others, and our stuff's usually bulletproof. I'm not too shook up about it. We're gonna win a pile of races this year with this Valvoline car. The team is on track. She was awesome. The, pace. the point leaders are having trouble today. Dale Jarrett came into this race with a point lead. Martin was third in the points, lost an engine. Here's the battle. Second place on those two hours. Yeah, Morgan got around him just a minute ago. The two cars really far in back right now, and that's for second place. Yeah, he fell back to me like 20 car back from the left of the road or something. I don't know what it is. Maybe he dropped him back five left of the road. One of the few on the top ten point men not to have trouble with him. Alan Kalicki, six in the points, crash. Eight baby Alice and eighth in the points, two laps down. That's strictly a tough day. Well, one good thing about this car is he was in the off the corner then. It was really snaked sideways, so the car is real loose. And uh, there's not time for a fifth cup. He's not the end of that condition. Morgan Shepard up front. This race is for second, Gordon and Wallace. Run is fourth, Urban is fifth, Jeff Bodine is sixth, and Brett Bodine is seventh. Here's Glenn Jarrett. Fox flooded a little bit down there, Rusty Wallace has been, now they're all smiles. What happened? The car got extremely loose. Rusty wasn't sure whether uh, somebody took the air off his car or, or he hit something on the race, but the car turned a little sideways. It's been getting looser and looser, so he just decided to back out and go out and make an adjustment. So no real problem, he's just taking it easy. And the one beneficiary of Mark Martin going to the garage was Brett Bodine. He had been lapped by Mark Martin, but he was between Mark and Morgan Shepard, who is the new leader. So Brett Bodine in seventh place. Earnhardt is eighth, Kyle Petty is ninth, Elliot tenth, Marlon eleventh, Mike Walter twelfth, Spencer thirteenth, Gordon Cole fourteenth, and Davey Allison fifteenth. You said coming down the straightaway, it looked like that. Like the 24 might be closed in the middle, but well, I guarantee you, Jeff Gordon understands the situation. He's seen the six car coasting that left it up to the east side to battle it out. And I tell you what, I wouldn't want to pick him on that. I think we got three races. This stop and adjustment the right way on the last stop. That's who's going to win. And there's four other cars in the lead lap. It's going to be tough to count out. Rudd and Irvin have both run well, so they're pitted well up pit road. From the leaders and the boat eye rollers. Another man with a good day. There's your leader, Morgan Shepard. And there's the interval. Second place and then third. There's so many things you need to do in the race as Morgan at the end. We've seen Rusty Wallace every time there's a caution come out. He's the strongest guy for several laps. It just depends on when you get the caution, if it's green, black stops, so many things can do to it. You know, I won a race here one time, Neil. I brought a car down here just to beat you out of those poles that year, so I brought me a super speedway car. I got a caution with about 15 hours to go, and my car was so much faster that I had enough built up time on everybody to run the race. I wonder why you did that. Shepard getting past a pack of traffic, but now Jeff Gordon's going to have to deal with. Breaks 
sacks in the nine car, the Mellon car. Exactly one second back. We'll see what happens here. One thing about the traffic, it's not going to bother, bother Jeff Gordon too bad because he's running that high line. There's not a lot of people up there in his way. Shepard running the bottom of the race track. He's first to second. The only thing that's in his way is that big old white slab of concrete over there. And he flirts with it quite a bit. That's the Atlanta Motor Speedway. There's a little bit of a hole right here, but uh, this is what we're looking to get through this band right here and have a pass through. We can finish this race. If you have any of that green goo on your screen, put up your umbrella. Shower activity. Whitman usually has somebody that's 100 years old. What's wrong with <laughs> Morgan Shepard at 242 laps leads Jeff Gordon by a second and a half here at Atlanta. Rusty Wallace is third. Ricky Rudd. Ernie Urban, the top five. Here's the rest of your top ten. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Atlanta, where Morgan Shepard leads Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace. Driving the Super Bowl for the Wood Brothers. He's going down their pit here with Glenn Jarrett. Well, I was talking to Leonard Wood earlier. This is his brother, Glenn Wood. Glenn, Morgan really runs well on this race track, right doesn't he? Do you think you're going to be able to do that with just one more stop? Right. Hey, well, that's a good strategy there. If they can make with one more stop, that's awfully good mileage. They'll win this thing. Great. That's bad news for the rest of the field. <laughs> Gladwood was a winning modified driver back in the late 40s and early 50s, the former days of NASCAR. And his brother turned their talents to car owning and building, and they were NASCAR's most successful. Saxon stopped for tires in the middle of the car and got his last back. P.J. Jones, second generation driver, his dad Parnelli, was to drive this car uh, last Sunday, but this Saturday, the 12 hours of Super P.J. is behind the wheel of Mander, he's turned up in Today in Seabrook, Florida, those Imps of Camel GT cars will be here for the Toyota Grand Prix of Atlanta, April 16th through 18th here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Shepard pulling up on Ted Musgrave. He's working some traffic right here. He's on that, he's doing this. 24 car was on right at the top of that shot. He's getting there a little bit and work this traffic. Yeah, and I think the nine car is used up a few times.
16th place, about to go three laps down. He's had a pretty fair run here today. He and Bobby Labonte are both kind of keeping close tabs on one another while the other one is up Sometimes you trap yourself. It'll push in and it'll loose off. It's loose in, pushing the other way. When you get a car that you can adjust and get it pretty neutral, it'll go fast. You get one that's you're doing both of them, you're in trouble. Jeff Gordon is on pit road. So is Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt. This is going to be something interesting as this unfolds here. They're stopping early for tires. We saw in the past, if you stretch your tires a long way, they wear out and you lose the ground. We'll have to see what happens with this. Let's go to Glenn. Rusty Wallace has brought the Miller Junior with Ralph Pontiac in. They're going to do four tires. I have an idea they're going to make a chassis adjustment on the car. They haven't done so yet, though. Just the four tire changes. They're going to try to tighten the car up the stack and open those fresh tires. We'll do the trick. He's down in the way. There was no chassis adjustment. He does beat Jeff Gordon out of the pits. 18 seconds stop for Wallace. 20.9 seconds for Jeff Gordon. Shows up right there as a little bit. Now here we're back in that old catch 22 deal with a 21. If he stays out there and we're flirting with that thing, the caution flag coming out, a lot of people are laying on his lap now. But the two car and the 24, if you're concerned with it, no caution comes out of this 21 pits. I think you're right, Neil. It's a catch 21 deal. Yep. <laughs> Speed with that 
show you where your favorite driver is running here. That's just a couple of laps to go. I can tell you, Jeff moved back up to the top side. He might have been trying to bottom the seat for the last one.
fastest track on the circuit after Daytona, Talladega, and perhaps Michigan. Later, but you notice that little red car, and that's very lucky in his car. He could have cracked the whole nose of the car, and then he had real problems. Morgan Shaw also picked up two seconds on the leader. He was now nine seconds behind. He's the third place car. See how the just the little bit of sand is there. It's not really a sand up on the racetrack, but dust, debris, a little bit of tires and stuff. What it does to the front spoiler of that car, all that expensive paint has been literally sandblasted just to braid it off.
done so not sure Live coverage of the Motorcraft 500 on the Nashville Network is brought to you by Motorcraft. Quality parts for quality cars from Ford. Here's the situation. Jeff Gordon leads this race with 28 laps to go. He and Rusty Wallace, the second place car, Morgan Shepard in third, and Ricky Rudd in fourth, all have to pit, and those stops have started. Wallace was the first to come on to pit road. This might, this might be a big strategy. He could not beat Gordon on those tires. I want to see if he's going to put some tires on this thing or just fuel. He might know he has to do something drastic like put tires on to beat him. Here they go. Glenn is there. He brings the Pontiac in, uh, Mike. I guess it looks like right now they're only going with two tires, right side tires and fuel. I don't believe they're going to do the left side, so that pretty well forces the hand of the 24 car. He is down and away, two tires and gasoline on 12.8 seconds. You can bet that Jeff Gordon's team will have the watch on Rusty Wallace, and if he is lapping faster than they're alive, then won't they almost have to bring the leader in? Yeah, they've got to. We've seen it in the past here. Every time there's been a stop, the first tires just drove away. They might bet the 24 guys have to make a call real quick. Jeff Gordon, the leader. 26 laps. I told you he, that he, Wallace, Pit, but Randy Pemberton, what about Ernie Irvin, the fifth place car? Well, uh, these guys have been pacing back and forth here turning over the crew. They're, they're going to go all the way, Mike. They've got nothing to lose. Now, Rusty may have just shut the door on him with that two-tire stop. We're going to have to take a look see where they are on the race track. Even if he goes all the way now, he may not be able to win. Rusty's going to still. There's Ernie Irvin. Thing. 
It's nice to be up here and not have to make these decisions. <laughs> I tell you, I can't help but think with a 10 to go or something. If they're not being fueled, they're going to have to get him in with 10 to go. Where if they are behind, he's sitting on fresh tires, and he's got 10 laps to make it up. They might be able to make a, a good call to go and fuel only if they don't give up so much time. It's just going to be a quick gamble right here. If they, they can run their distance, they might just have fuel only when they run this up for us. There's going to be a lot of planning going on. Still out there, he would likely have left the field by now. But Martin went to the garage with engine failure after being the dominant car for much of the day. Out shacked in the garage, Phil Parsons, Joe Button crashed, Dick Trickle, Darrell Waltrip, engine trouble, Dave Gordon's pit. Here's Glenn. Well, Neil Bonnet, you are exactly right in guessing that they might go with fuel only. I went over to the gas can, got Ray Everham's attention, pointed to it, and I said, fuel only. And shook his head. But he did shake his head, yes. Right now, fuel only in the car. I would not say when, but uh, I would say it would be within the next five laps. Last three laps on Rusty Wallace, 31-41, 31-43, 43. Jeff Gordon also very steady. But he is consistently a of a second, a third of a second, slower each lap than Rusty Ross. Dale Earnhardt pitting the Richard Childress Goodrent Chevrolet in 10th place. An uncharacteristic two laps back. Yeah, they don't need work on the test anymore. They know they have it beat in the day. They're just trying to finish it out and get a good finish in the car. Trying to survive, I guess, now. Jeff Gordon has lapped fifth place, Jeff Bodine. So only Gordon, Morgan Shepard, Ricky Rudd, and Ernie Irvin are on the lead lap. But remember, when those four drivers pit, if they pit, that will bring Bodine and Rusty Wallace, who has already pitted, back up onto the lead lap. He's got that hatchet you saw up above Jeff Gordon's pit to help him find his, uh, find his pit. They may have to just change that to a dollar sign. It may no longer be appropriate. <laughs> Fifteen laps to go. Boy, they're talking about they're going to put the field. You just can't, you can't run it out. I mean, you know, you have to stop. You got you to make up a decision side. I guess they're going to do a few only. You know, I've been in this spot when I was a young driver, and I'm going to tell you something. That guy right there, you hear about money and this and that. You know what he's interested in? Winning that race. Money being that guy's running, and he's so happy. I tell you, he just, it's exciting to be around. I really have a good time just interviewing him in the pits and stuff. He's an exciting young man, I tell you what. He's in a race city, and his favorite pastime has been going to the mall to play video games. Ricky Rudd is in. Fourth place car. You think he's playing the biggest game of his life today? I'm telling you, get the done. It's on video, live on TNN. I heard we got it a few times tonight. I think so. Seth Gordon, is that me? This is Jeff Gordon's fifth career Winston Cup start. Now, Neil, how much gas will he need to take on? Three gallons. Here we're fixing to find out. He's coming down pit road right now. And that, I think, buddy, is the key to Ray Evernham's strategy. The longer he leaves his driver out there, the less gas they have to take, the less time they have to spend on pit lane. Back what we're going to do here, we're going to keep up with Rusty Wallace. Okay, we're watching a 24. Here's Rusty. He's going through the second turn right now. We're going to see if we can keep up where Rusty's at. And the 24th has been about Rusty's halfway down the back straightaway right now. Halfway on the back straightaway. Oh, he's over the line. No, man, no. He's over the line. a nine and a half second pit stop. Brett Bodine, Michael Walter also stopped. Here comes Wallace. Gordon struggling to get back up to speed in turn two. Wallace is closing. Twelve laps to go. When they get to turn three, will Gordon have the speed to sustain his lead? The Wallace flying. Two car running down with those tires. And how much gas did they actually get in the car? That's the other thing. Well, we've got a cliffhanger here. Morgan 
Shepard takes over the lead. Gordon gets back out right ahead of Rusty Wallace, but coasting over the line in his pit had the hurt. This pretty evident doubles the call on the day. Yes. Because even with the problem, look at the big lead he's got with just 11 laps to go. If they hadn't had the problem, it'd been a safe into the field. He is the leader. Ernie Irvin is second, and Jeff Bodine is third. Bodine is in. Gas and go. Nodding his head. Yes, that's enough. Yes, go. We're worried about those other two cars. The wood driver might come off the deal. These are guys in the four car. Second lead. He could run out of gas at the white flag and maybe coast around the room. That's tough. Need to walk like that. Yeah, that's it. Now we're all left still. We're talking about putting all your eggs in one basket. And with the pit road speed limit, you cannot come all the way down pit road at the speed limit, get gas and get out in 25 seconds. So the die is cast for them. They can't come in during this race. To go. The man with the answer, perhaps, to the $64,000 question. No, it's more than that. Here's Glenn Jarrett. He's talking to Morgan Shepard right now. This is Eddie Wood. Eddie, we all want to know, can you make it? Shepard. Seven laps to go. He'd have to go 69 laps on this tank of fuel to make it. Well, I like this strategy. You don't do better. You're supposed to not make it. But that's a place that you're supposed to do things you're not supposed to do. That was never a question in my mind. I raced for those people as good Neil, and I knew they'd take a shot at it. I mean, these boys would rather down and do anything anyhow. So it's just. Urban is second. He's hit the wall. We're told he has bounced off the wall. Here he comes in. He will pin. Oh, tried to pin. Nope, he'll stay out with so few laps left. Let's have a look and see what happened to Jeff Gordon's car in a replay. Left side of your screen. He's been right up there on the wall. One thing that caused this is the two car been gaining and gaining and gaining. And Gordon's trying to do as best as he can driving things to keep that lead. And he just used up the track on the top of it. Got him under. It's raining. This was the six back out. But I'm sure last car was looking at the rain. They just said 24 out. He was coming up here road and said, just keep riding. They might call this out. Trying to keep this going for five more laps. Morgan Shepard, Ernie Irvin, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon is now fourth. Fifth is Ricky Rudd. Sixth is Jeff Bodine. Seventh is Kyle Penny. Come back, he's had today from that. Way back starting spot. And then Brett Bodine, Bill Elliott, and Jimmy Spencer is town. Morgan, I bet you right here, the Morgan is rolling out of that throttle. He's nursing it as well. He's in that car. You've seen Jeff Gordon go a lap down just then. I mean, from hero to out of here. I mean, one little move on the racetrack. That's what we always tell. He'll still be the top rookie of the day. There's Shepard going out of your picture. Looking for Ernie Irvin, a second place car. Still looking. Still looking. I'll tell you what, if I can get this thing down the road to go, that coast had to run back straight away. Oh, yeah, one, two, pass this car finishing line. Then we'll knock it out here and make it back. And we've got rain hitting on the wind of the booth here, so it's definitely got just a little sprinkle. A little sprinkle. 18 seconds is Morgan Shepard's lead with two and a half laps to go.
Shepard. Last lap. In his pit, Glenn and Eddie were the Underwood brothers. Tell him, man, don't go on. He's talking around. He's talking to everybody. I think they got the Energizer Bunny in that car. He's still going. He's still going. 105 miles on one tank of fuel. He has the lead to coast home from here. In turn four to the front straightaway. The winner of one of the biggest cliffhangers we've had in a long time, Morgan Shepard wins it for the Wood Brothers. Boy, oh boy. Good bunch of things. I'll tell you, we'll talk about Bernie Irvin has the gas to go the distance and finish second. Looks like he's almost going to burn slow. Margin of victory, 17 and a half seconds. Rusty Wallace finishes third. Harry Gant is out of gas, coasting across the line. We'll be right back. It's over. At the Motorcraft 500, Morgan Shepard and Ernie Irvin outgassed the field to finish 1-2 ahead of Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, and Ricky Rudd. In victory lane, Glenn Jarrett. Well, the jubilant group has really given Morgan the, the, a lot of congratulations and Eddie? deserve so. Leonard, I want to add my Morgan, great job there. Oh, thank you, Glenn. I tell you, you know, whenever the right front tire went flat coming off the fourth turn, I thought it was all over there. Uh, our car was real good on the long run. Oh, man, the Sidco crew just performed like I don't know what today. Everything was just great. What is it about Atlanta Raceway? You've had four victories now. Three of them have come here. Well, thank God for Atlanta. <laughs> All I can say, uh, we run good down here, and uh, we're always in contention. And uh, I just uh, thank, God it was a, thank God it was a safe race today. And the Sidco Thunderbird come out on top. All right, what about those last couple laps there when you guys were stretching that fuel mileage? Could you hear everything in that race car? Well, the radios wasn't working too good, but uh, they said something about saving fuel. And so when I got to the Quaker State car, I just kind of eased out of it and, and brought the car down a little lower in the corners, and I was just trying to save all the fuel I could. Well, again, a great job, a great call by the crew, and a wonderful day for Morgan Shepard, the Wood Brothers, and the Sitco Ford Thunderbird. First victory for Morgan since the fall of 1990. His fourth Winston Cup win, and he has won now for four different car owners, including, as Buddy and Neil have here at Atlanta, for the Wood Brothers. Great day. We're going to talk to more of the drivers involved in this Motorcraft 500 when we come back. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Well, it took six days to get it in, but the folks saw a great one today. Rusty Wallace got out early from the pole, and Mark Martin dominated this race until the engine let go. Jeff Gordon gave everybody something to think about, but it was the masters of race strategy and fancy pet work, uh, pit work, the Wood Brothers, who end up in victory lane with their driver, Morgan Shepard. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Well, Eddie Wood standing by. The Miller uh, pit crew award of the race. Of course, it couldn't go to anyone else. He did a great job today. Well, really, we was not supposed to make it. We, we figured, 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 we'd come up about a half a gallon short, and then everybody began to come in, and. Uh, you know, it just kind of made it easy for us then because, you know, I just get back off, back off, back off. And before it was all, you know, he just was backing off at starting line. But, uh, you know, it all worked out good. Everything, everybody worked good. I'd like to thank Sid Go, uh, Larry and Fran Britton, their anniversary today. Let's say hi to y'all, my wife and kids. Uh, I want to thank Ford Motor Company, Sid Go, Goodyear, GE, Winter Ford. God, I'm going to keep on it. Don't leave this thing. <laughs> uh, just everybody had anything to do with Tommy Turner built a good motor. Uh, Charlie Broomhouse did the body. You know, I just like to thank everybody involved that just made this happen. Eddie, it's amazing how hard you guys have to work in order to win a race these days. Three weeks ago, we were at Rockingham. You bring a car in that wasn't handling. You change everything on the car. You come back, run well at Richmond, and absolutely fantastic here today. Yeah, it's kind of the way racing is. It kind of turns around on you, but. We did a lot of testing after Rockingham. We were kind of down after that. We took three cars to Darlington. In fact, this was one of the cars and um, just shook it down. And um, then we went to Wilkesburg the next morning with the same three cars. And, you know, things just began to fall together. You know, everything just, when, when things start working, they work. When they don't, man, they don't. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, we've been around a long time and it just, you know, this one is good. You know, it's, we needed this bad. I'll tell you, this kid's been to victory lane a few times. He's obviously choked up. That, that shows you how much it means to win one of these Winston Cup races. Glenn Jarrett. Okay, thanks, Randy. And a smiling Rusty Wallace has stepped up here. Not a bad day, all in all. It was a real good day. I was real happy with it. I'll tell you, talk about being confused, though. 
I mean, the crew knew where they were at, but they weren't. I didn't. I asked them not to say nothing to me at the end of the race. I was just driving. I had took two tires in early, and I just caught Gordon right there at the end, and he slipped and got up in the fence. And when I passed him, I thought I was leading the race. And I come across that checkered flag, I thought I won the race. I said, man, this is great, good feeling. I stayed real calm. And I looked over, and I seen the 21 crew jumping up and down. But uh, I'd like to say thanks to TNN for picking up this race, because all the fans were able to see this thing today when the SV, or when ABC had a back out. But hey, this middle Jane draft Pontiac ran great today. Uh, we moved way up in the points, and it takes top five finishes to keep doing it. The team's hot, it's going to stay that way. Well, I started have been really consistent uh, other than that trouble you had at Daytona this this team has really come on strong yeah it's bang 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 every week you know real consistent runs and buddy make a made a real smart call with two tires right there at the end and I was real proud of him and the crew did a wonderful job I just we just got beat today and we got a top three we got a three a uh, third place finish and uh, I was real happy with the way the car run we just got out gas miles today Okay, good job, Rusty Wallace. Mike Joy? Well, after Daytona, a first, a second, and a third. He is third in the Winston Cup points. Quick look at the top end of the order of finish. We'll be back with much more from Atlanta right after this. At Atlanta Motor Speedway, these pictures from the Family Channel blimp as the crowd begins to file out. Some of them a little stunned by what happened here in the closing laps as Morgan Shepard goes to victory lane. Here's the order of finish. Shepard, the winner. Irvin, the two of them did not stop, did not make a final pit stop, and Ended up 1-2. Rusty Wallace was third. Jeff Gordon was fourth. Ricky Rudd, the fifth place finisher. Jeff Bodine was sixth. Kyle Petty, Brett Bodine, Bill Elliott, Jimmy Spencer hung on for 10th place finish. Dale Earnhardt, 11th, the point leader now. Sterling Marlin, Davey Allison, Michael Waltrip, and Kenny Wallace, the second rookie to finish. Then Bobby Hillen, Derek Cope, Bobby Labonte, Harry Gant, and Ted Musgrave, the top 20. Hutt Strickland, Jimmy Means, Greg Sachs, Rick Wilson, and Wally Dallenbach. Then Bobby Hamilton, Jimmy Horton, Lake Speed, Ken Schrader, and Rick Mask, 30th. Dale Jarrett, by coming back out, he gained seven positions. And if he'd stayed in the garage, that's worth 21 points. Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, Dave Marcus, and Darrell Waltrip. In the garage at the end of the race, Alan Kowicki, Dick Trickle, Joe Rutman, Phil Parsons, and Bob Shack. Glenn? Okay, uh, another guy who is pretty well satisfied with today's performance. In fact, I heard him say earlier he took a fifth place car and ran second. Ernie Irvin. Well, you know, as I owe it all to the crew. You know, they uh, obviously put a good car under me. And, um, you know, the last practice yesterday, we were probably one of the worst cars on the racetrack. And Tony and myself and everybody there just sat down and just said, okay, what do we need to do to fix it? Took an educated guess, changed three springs, three shocks, and uh, cut the front fenders up on it. Threw the green flag, and we were pretty good. And uh, worked on it all day and um, made a pretty good race car out of it. Well, there were times that uh, that looked like your car was real strong and then it would go away from it. That's the characteristic of this racetrack, though, isn't it, with these big wide turns? Well, that's there's so much corner that um, the driver can make so much difference here. You know, I'll be trying a different line and it's three tenths slower and it takes you three or four laps to figure it out. You know, they're reading your times, you're trying to figure out where you're losing it at. So, you know, it's a rhythm racetrack. You got to get your rhythm and uh, try to keep it. And um, if you can do that, you can usually stay at real consistent speed. Jeff was really doing a good job of running the consistent within a tenth of a second a lap. And uh, that's what it takes to win, I think. Well, the Kodak Films Chevrolet has certainly got their rhythm now. They've come on very consistent. Ernie Irvin's going to be a factor for this season. Now let's go to Randy, who's standing by with Jeff Gordon. Jeff, a fantastic run for you. Disappointed a little bit or happy with where you finished? Well, there's no way we can be disappointed with a fourth. Um, we just we get, found ourselves leading the race and an opportunity to win, and uh, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself. We ran good all day long. Guys did a great job in the pits, and I came in for a stop and go there at the end. It was unfortunate we had to make a stop and go, and I slid past the, the, the pits. We had to slide the car back, got back out there. Then I hit the wall, so it was just one of those days where uh, really everything went great, and then, you know, when the pressure got on there at the end, I guess I choked. But other than that, you know, just unbelievable day for us. One other incident that you had uh, up there in turns three and four with uh, Jimmy Spencer trying to lap him. Well, you know, I mean, Jimmy was racing the leader just like he should if he's a lap down and, and or possibly going a lap down. And, what, and he was holding his own. He wasn't really holding me up. I was just running my own pace. But what happened was he moved up into my line, and the air from my car got him loose, and then I hit him. And, you know, it, it could have been... A, a bad situation and that's why you don't really like to run around lap cars but uh, you know I could find myself in the same situation. Explain to us about the line you were running out there. Did you want to go there or was that where the car had to go? 
Yeah, the car wanted to go there. When we got new tires, the car was pretty loose, and I would run right around the bottom, uh, and the car felt great. As the tires went away, my line kept moving up and up, and really, I would I had a good pace going. I could really get comfortable with the car in that high line. They would beat me through the middle of the corner, but I'd kill them from from the middle off. So, you know, it was a it was an interesting day. We learned a lot, and I'm really happy with the four. Okay, nice job. You moved from tenth to fifth in the points. And it's his best career Winston Cup finish. Jeff Gordon, who almost won it all here today at Atlanta. We'll have a lot more from Atlanta Motor Speedway coming at you. No snow, but we'll be right back. Welcome back to TNN's live coverage of the Motorcraft 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. I'm Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker. Randy Pemberton and Glenn Jarrett will have more folks to talk to. Let's review the Winston Cup points as they now stand. Dale Earnhardt. Moves up into the point lead. He finished 11th today. He has 19 points on Jeff Bodine, who finished 6th. Rusty Wallace moves up to 3rd. Dale Jarrett drops to 4th. Jeff Gordon moves up 5 spots to 5th. Mark Martin is 6th. Ernie Irvin is 7th, 92 points out. Davey Allison 8th. Morgan Shepard moves up to 9th. And Hutt Strickland drops to 10th. Jimmy Spencer climbs to 11th. Ted Musgrave 12th. Ricky Rudd to 13th. Alan Kowicki slides to 14th. And Kyle Petty is 15th. 16th is Kenny Schrader. 17th, Harry Gant. Terry Labonte, Sterling Marlin, and Brett Bodine are the top 20 in the Winston Cup standings. We've got more folks to talk to here in Atlanta, but our next telecast of NASCAR racing on the Nashville Network, the Mountain Dew 400, Saturday, April 10th, live 4 p.m. from Hickory, North Carolina, on the network that brings you twice as much live bush racing as anybody else, TNN. Tomorrow, we were scheduled to bring you the Miller Genuine Draft 500 at Martinsville, Virginia. That race has been postponed due to the snow and rain and condition of the parking areas there. It has been rescheduled to Saturday, May 8th. TNN will be there live at Martinsville Saturday, May 8th, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, here on TNN. And the next Winston Cup race you'll see on TNN is the Winston, NASCAR's all-star night of racing. Saturday night, May 22nd, 7.30 Eastern Time. Live from the Charlotte Motor Speedway right here on TNN. Glenn Jarrett. I'm well, standing by with Kyle Petty. Kyle, a seventh place finish, and it's moved you up to 15th in the point standings. You got things finally turned around, headed in the right direction. Yeah, it's, you know, this is what amazes me, is to run like we run the day, and uh, you get a decent finish, and you go to places like Rockingham and Daytona, run really good and have terrible finishes, but. Uh, we needed this one. You know, we, we come out here. I, I don't think it's, it's been a long time since I've seen that many bad driving race cars on a racetrack. And there was trash all over the racetrack all day long. You had to dodge pieces that were falling off cars all day. So it was an exciting day out there. Well, uh, we saw a lot of close scrapes, a lot of people brushed them on and so forth. Uh, you have any close calls? <laughs> My close call was when they dropped the green flag and they started this thing for about 320-some laps. I think I had a close call every lap. It was that kind of day for me. Uh, people would catch me, and I'd just pull over and let them go. It was just one of those deals where... Uh, I couldn't race with anybody. I just had to keep running and just run our pace. And, you know, it worked out for us today. It doesn't always work out. That's pretty frustrating, though, not to be able to race when that's what you're out there for, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. You know, you, you come to race, you know, and you get in a, in a situation where if anybody gets close to you, your car jumps out from under you or the pusher's real bad, and you just say, hey, you know, I don't, I don't need this today. I don't need to be driving this hard. So, uh, you know, you just kind of find a pace and settle in. And we run like uh, 3280s, 3290s, 33 flats right along in there. And it just kept us. We got lapped a couple of times, but... Uh, you know, if I'd have really run it, I'd have been down to running 34 flats and stuff by the time I run the tires off of it. Okay, Kyle, thanks. Now let's go back to Randy. Uh, you talk about close calls. Here's Jeff Bodine. He's had more than a close call. He actually didn't feel too good about lap 100, did you? I'm still burping. I guess I had the flu last week. I guess it went from my head to my stomach. Hi, Kathy, Matt Berry. Love you guys. I need you, Kathy. I'm sick. <laughs> need help. What about your car? Yesterday, you didn't get much time in practice. You blew an engine. You got about, what, maybe 15 minutes on the racetrack. So tell us how the scenario played out today for this race. We started out. We were ready for to make some adjustments. We didn't know if the car was going to be right or not. That's why we pitted early. Uh, thank goodness for that quick yellow. Uh, the car was pretty bad. We stiffened the right rear spring up, and, boy, it took off. Ran pretty good. We adjusted all day long and really never had it perfect, but uh, it was pretty darn good. And, you know, we started way back, and uh, me being sick, Probably holding the thing back a little bit. That was a good run for us. Okay, congratulations. Nice job. Uh, Mike Joy. You know, a lot of folks sitting at home might want to take a few laps around Atlanta or Rockingham at the Buck Baker Driving School. Professor, uh, what do they call or write for more information? Well, they can call. 
<laughs> the Buckbaker Driving School. It's listed there in Charlotte. I don't have the number with me. Oops. Of course. Now nope. I'll get three demerits and a kick. But it's in the it's it listed. Charlotte, North Carolina, Area 704. Call information for the Buckbaker Driving School at Atlanta and at Rockingham. We'll be right back with more from the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Right if we pause for these messages on TNN. Well, the man they call Mr. Excitement uh, gave us a, a couple of heart stoppages here today, but Jimmy Spencer was rewarded with a 10th place finish. Let's get his thoughts. Well, Jimmy, uh, Mike's talking about uh, a couple of heart stopping incidents there. <laughs> this this might have been the hardest working guy out there. What happened a couple of times on that thing? Absolutely was spun out, but yet you saved it. Well, I'm going to congratulate Morgan. He drove a good race, but he didn't drive any harder than I did. Uh, I don't know, Glenn. You know, uh, we just got up there and got underneath Dale and lost a little air. And my God, I don't know what saved me, but I think the Lord did. Uh, then I, I made a mistake up there when the leaders uh, pulled up in front of them with lap traffic and Jeff Gordon bumped me. Didn't mean to do that to him. But at least he, uh, he didn't get an accident, neither did I. But you know, the Meineke car ran real well today. We just had two bad pit stops. We broke two air guns and took us out of a, a top five finish to 10th. So, you know, all in all, our year isn't about what we wanted, but, uh, you know, we're hanging in there and it's going to turn around for us. Well, you can bet if anybody will turn it around in the race car that this man will do it. Good job, Jimmy. Now let's go to Randy. Brett Bedine, any time you can finish in the top ten, you've had a good day. You finished eighth today. Well, you know, we had a pretty good run, uh, considering all the problems we had yesterday. Uh, didn't get any practice like the rest of the guys did. and We basically had to start the car exactly how we were going to start it last week without any practice. And, uh, you know, it really hurt us. So uh, the adjustments we needed we couldn't do during the race, and we just tried to patch it the best we could. Uh, you know, I'm real happy with the run, uh, don't get me wrong, because of the problems we've had and, and all that, but uh, uh, I would have liked to have had a little practice yesterday. We could have made good adjustments. Okay. Nice run today. Mike Joy? Thanks, Randy. You want to find out how tough this is at Atlanta? Call 704-527-2763. That's the Buck Baker Driving School. <laughs> Buddy, Jeff, you have fun today? Uh, great. I'll tell you what. We got the best camera crew, and not because I'm on there, but you guys really do a great job on this thing, and I'm just glad to be with all of you. We had a lot of fun, and we hope you folks had fun watching it. For Neil Bonnet, Buddy Baker, Randy Pemberton, and Glenn Jarrett, I'm Mike Joy congratulating Morgan Shepard on his Motorcraft 500 victory. Tune in to TNN Saturday, April 10th, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, when live from Hickory, North Carolina, we bring you the Mountain Dew 400 Bush Series race. So long from Atlanta.